put together sick man Ooh. we've ever seen. Well, that's good. I got Dr. Pepper. It's keeping me awake. At a time. Another oh, time. Oh, I want Dr. Pepper. Another world. Doesn't that sound good? It did sound. That's why I grabbed one. Yeah. You Plus, should do a... You, oh, then you're talking about your crazy, sick, deep voice. You should no. do a movie trailer, Scott, real quick. <coughs> just, just give Another us one. world. Another time. Oh, no, that's, that's, the, that's the start of that song. Hold on. In a world where heroes... Blah, blah, blah. I could do a pretty good... Uh, my dearest Martha. Today I'm giving you one of these, by the way, so be ready. Yeah. Don't be oh, ready, okay. but just know that there's one coming. We haven't done one in a while, so we gotta. Yeah, it's time for a little Martha. We gotta people give people what they want. All right, here we go. We're recording on both ends. Sounds gross. Uh, let's do. <laughs> <laughs> got a camera set up at the anus. Camera set up. Yep. The peel. Yep. Right. Oh, we're gonna. S- that's the, the other end. That's not. Is that both ends? <laughs> no, the other end. Traditionally, the um, one end is your mouth. The other end is your bum. Right. Oh. Mm. And your bum is just like... opposite of your penis. <laughs> For both, it starts and stops with the uh, with peeing and pooping. That's the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. Yeah, because like, one's an intake and the other's an outtake. I guess that's why we say, yeah, you know, in one end and one out the other. Think of the human as a big pipe that turns beautiful things into actual shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, most I know most people. There may be some people disagree with me, but the bum exit only. That's how I look at it. Exit only i'm gonna put Good tattoo that we've gotten these policies of yours yeah. out on the internet scott just to really make it clear for everyone i just want to put a little tramp stamp tattoo right there that points <laughs> just, an arrow you have down. a lot of people coming after your butthole <laughs> it's, a, it's more of a cul-de-sac though <laughs> it's definitely you, one it's definitely one way down for a quiet moment next to kim and she whispers in your ear your ear and you just go no kim yeah exit Exit only. only. It's, it's one way, but it's got that construction sign that says local traffic only. Yeah, that's, okay. that's a pretty good one, yeah. Although I don't even want local traffic. It's literally exit only. Do not try to park your truck there. And Well, you've demolished all the houses, and it's awaiting gentrification. So You could say this is a traffic. tainted discussion. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> tainted. Taint. Taint no discussion like a taint discussion. That's right. All right, here it comes. Let's do a show. It starts in three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Core. This is Core. It's a show about video games. It used to be about Heroes of the Storm exclusively, but we stopped doing that because we kind of had to. And we moved on to the world of Core Gaming because our name fit that nicely. So that's why we did it. For those just joining us and wondering where the hell the Heroes stuff went, don't worry. We still like that game. We still play it. But damn it, we're going to talk about video games in a broader sense. We're in beta stage right now, still figuring some things out, still working out some bugs. And right now, I want to talk about Anthem some more. Well, I don't. But I think Bo might. All right, so let's set up the, the story for this. I'm Scott Johnson with Bo Schwartz and John Jagger. Bo, sometime, sometime ago, as in like a day ago, a couple days ago. Was it two days ago? Whatever it was. It was yesterday, actually. Oh, okay. Yesterday, there was a story that broke on Kotaku.com, who is becoming very uh, famous thanks to J- Jason Schreier. Schreier? Schreier. 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 Yep. Uh, oh, that's where the hobbits live. Yeah. Named after the... Exactly. Yeah. I don't the Jason mean... Schreier. Yeah, they don't mean to Mr. Frodo when they go there. Anyway, <laughs> he uh, he has become famous lately for his deep dives into mainly... Well, he, he has a special tactic toward corporate culture and what's going on behind the scenes at some of our favorite developers. He broke a lot of stuff around the Diablo um, mess, or not the Diablo mess, excuse me, the uh, Activision Blizzard layoff mess, and has a lot of reliable uh, contacts within organizations that tend to back up his stories. So so whatever you may say about Kotaku's place in games journalism, where they tend to sort of poke at things that maybe the things that are getting poked don't want to be poked, He's pretty good at poking it and poking it with a a truth stick. Okay, that's how I'm going to say it. Uh, anyway, Jason posted an article called How Bioware's Anthem Went Wrong. And it goes deep and hard into the problems that Anthem and Bioware and EA have all had with the launch of Anthem. Uh, the cadence of the game since then, what people expect from it now, and so on. And Bo, you read that whole thing and seemed very upset and sad on the internet for a while there, for a few days. Or for I mean, I, I made a scathing tweet to just 
for the likes. You I did. Guess. And even one uh, a guy a guy we all know as one who avoids that sort of drama. One uh, Kyle Ferguson saw your tweet and and asked you in our Slack, "Hey, what's with that tweet? Is it the Bioware thing?" So even he had his little antennae, you know, floating around out there, and he could kind of tell what stink you were laying, you know. So here, yeah. <laughs> I was definitely laying that stink, but I didn't, you know, comment on any names or no, of because not. it it's just it's not the only example. It's just the latest and. In- pretty well documented example by jason yeah now do you of practice in the gaming industry you want to get into what your take is on this because okay the general takeaway is they're tired they're burned out they knew the game wasn't ready when it launched but they had to launch anyway all of those pressures we hear about in the business um where they have to hit certain dates and if they don't that's bad for bottom line but then they launch the game, gamers revolt, people get mad, they want their money back, they in this case they stop subscribing to Origin or whatever, and now you're left with a broken game, a community who's upset and split and divided, and then maybe you can come back. Like the easier I here's my take real quick, and then I just want to hear your take on it. I think it's easier for a game to turn itself around and potentially become awesome the smaller your team is. So you always hear about having to, you guys ever heard the old phrase, like if I need to turn um, the car around and it's a narrow road, it might be a little, "Eh, eh, eh," but I'll make it out, right? But if you're on that same road and it's got walls on the side and you're in a giant tank, sometimes it can take days to turn around because you just don't have the same kind of maneuverability. And I think Huge organizations are... Whoops, that's not supposed to play again. Sorry. Huge organization. Goodbye, everybody. It's been great. We've enjoyed it. <laughs> I should play every time we say huge organization. <laughs> but imagine... Uh, what was my point? <laughs> I forgot my point. Well, oh, it's, oh. it's yeah. funny you mention it because I literally just had this conversation in terms of my actual job today. The analogy we used there was it's like turning a small little speedboat versus turning a big cruise liner. One of those things is going to turn real quick, and the other one is going to take a very long time. Yeah, or like an aircraft carrier or something that's just big and slow. And it makes sense as a metaphor because the bigger you are, the harder it is to get everything kind of aligned and, and get things uh, made correct. I would say that the ex- the uh, the exception to this in recent years has been Ubisoft of all giant behemoths. They have had a number of games come out a little wet noodly not really hitting the marks, not exactly uh, delivering on what was promised or being buggy to some degree or whatever it may be. And I would use examples of Ghost Recon Wildlands um, for Honor, their melee game thing, and uh, Rainbow Six Siege were all games that had troubled releases, but we saw teams at those company, at that company and, and in the d- development teams themselves stick to it crank on it until they get things right and have turned all three of those properties around to be some of the best and most excellent offerings they have. Would I rather them launch perfectly? Absolutely. Everybody would, but it's been nice to see one of the bigger companies get their head around what that means and, and, and come through for the players and and patch these games to the point that they're great. And now you have, you know, siege is killing it in esports and on Twitch and all sorts of other stuff. Wildlands, as I've said this before, is probably my favorite open world action game right now. It's great. And from what I hear, those who love For Honor uh, love it. Like they've really gone places with For Honor. So it can be done. And usually you just see it done by a smaller team. Uh, No Man's Sky, good example. Launches, kind of pooped the bed. Didn't really have it right at launch. Took the time they needed to get it where it needed to be, and now nobody's really complaining about that game. Everyone loves, everyone loves No Man's Sky. If they're they're playing it, they they know why they like it, and they they have, for all intents and purposes, turned that thing around after a very messy launch. I'd like to think Anthem could do this, but after reading this article, I think there's some fundamental problems over there that probably don't exist for the No Man's Sky people, that may not exist for these individual teams at Ubisoft for the other examples I used. They don't, they sound, they sound defeated, man. Like that sounds like a messy bunch of mess. And it's not even about a poor launch or a crappy reception or 
a buggy mess. It feels like they're just already in this mode of we just hate, you know, like nobody's happy there at all. Every, every big company is going to eventually get its disgruntled folks. And so if you seek out those folks, you'll find things like that said about any company, though. Right. Um, yeah, so a few things. There's a lot to untangle because I take this not as a state of, of affairs from Bioware, but as a state of affairs in gaming period. Like mm. it's, but it's using an example of a company. And, and I think for me, that small versus large thing is probably true to a certain extent, but also somewhat false. Mm. I just want to preface a few things. Game, I just want to say game development's hard. And I think it takes a lot of time and a lot of pre-planning but at the same time, you're making alchemy, so you're not quite sure where you're going and if the net result is going to be fun, and they have to sell products. So it needs to be successful for it to have been worth doing in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, so I understand, with all that preface, that it's difficult. I think the biggest problem with large organizations is for everyone who works at a job within a large organization, what's more important? releasing an epic game or keeping your job mm. probably for most people it's yeah. keeping their job yeah that's just people sure. and and unfortunately um you know a, a lot of what i got from the article in relation to that sounded like there was a lot of big talk about what the project would be but at the end of the day it lacked the alpha people who are going to decide and implement plans. And then it became too late and they decided the company EA at large or whoever decided that it was better to push a product out the door to meet a certain date than to have a game that is worth anyone's time playing. Right. And, and, and the people who were interviewed in the article pointed to the fact that it was directionless. Right. What, pisses me off is that they play the game internally they know what state it's in sometimes developers don't understand that the game that they have is just not going to connect with the community see artifact and steam actually launched a valve actually launched a post for artifact saying you know what we thought it'd be a great game you guys don't like it we're taking it back and we're we're not doing updates to the game we're going to rethink it because we want this to be successful so doing the thing that you know anthem's not doing which is doubling down and being like no it's a great game we're gonna update it it's gonna be awesome you guys can see like just don't write shitty articles so um it's an example of everyone there knows like learning that the e3 trailer and granted it was mentioned in the article that most trailers are cobbled together of not finished products but the ea trailer was basically stitched together before it won all these awards and that there was no meat to back up the sizzle Mm. it was just smell yeah and that they had to crunch and crunch is something that comes up with successful games and not successful games to do this and to me in a post minecraft world where the reverse happened that the game was perfected and generated hype over time um and that a lot of companies attempted to emulate this, that this Hollywood blockbuster mentality towards developing and launching games is flawed. It's hurting the people that work on them. It's producing games that are not good. And it's baiting people very actively into play at them. It's an amazing game. Here's an amazing trailer. Here's all the cool shit you're going to do. And they know they're basically outright lying to people. Mm. And that's what that was the focus, I think, of my ire. Like, there's definitely a lot of other problems that can be discussed there about crunch. They said Dragon Age 4 was kind of a miracle because it the same factors went into play, and they use that term Bioware magic like everything's shitty and disorganized. And all of a sudden, the last during crunch, it comes together and we make an awesome game. Like, good plan, everyone. You know, like, <laughs> let's repeat that. Like, just because a process worked doesn't mean the process is what you should be doing. Mm. And and clearly that's what they did. Um, so so what? So hmm. I mean, so like, what, like there's a quote here. I just want to read real quick. One of the Bioware developers who would not use their name for the for the thing, which is common with a sort of journalism, says EA had the team health reports. Anthem's morale was among the highest of all EA. It was really really good for a while. Everybody saw that there was so much potential in those early prototypes. Potential was always the word there. Unquote. 
I think that speaks to your all sizzle and no meat. Sure. Here's the big difference with the Hollywood approach and the video game approach. Taking the Hollywood approach in video games. Hollywood, if they set, tell me, oh, it's the best movie ever. It's going to be amazing. You should watch it. Buy tickets now and show me this hot trailer and I get hyped for it. And then I watch it. It sucks. I'm out two hours and maybe 20 bucks. Yeah. Maybe a bit more if I took the family. Mm-hmm. Video games proposition is we want you playing this 40 hours a week. We want this to be your game of choice, especially with games of service. They want you to blow wads of cash on microtransactions now and spend a lot of time in their game and have it be memeable in positive way, not a negative way. Have it be on Twitch all the time. They want people calling in sick to play their games. They want that. You want that. You know, the Apex Legends effect is the most recent example. People just lose their minds and have to play it all the time. But what's a pisser is that, you know, when they know the game's not going to be good, like they have to have known. They have to have known. And it happens a lot. I bought Duke Nukem at launch. It was a turd. They could not have not known that that game was was garbage. Oh, and they, they sold yeah. it and hyped it everywhere. And they need to stop doing that because, A, it's way more expensive to buy. Some, and, B, there's a demand like I'm going to be playing this a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and people get invested. People, it, it, I just, it just really don't like it. And then to hear the tail end, which is people, I think there was a comment in the article who like, it was apparently anonymous, but he says, I've worked on big games. There's nothing more defeated, uh, defeating to your spirit than working on something for five to eight years, knowing it's bad, having it come out and be just a shame on your CV that you spent the last 10 years working on a turd yeah so thank you for writing this article and i'm like there is a problem with big games industry pushing this hollywood model on to gaming it if you want a game that people are going to spend a long time playing and envision a 10-year plan and be like world of warcraft you need to think about um that everything can't hang on launch you've got to take like a long-term view of it which means involving your community in those conversations it means saying hey we know it's not great but not all our chips are bet on a fantastic launch here's what we've got and we do see game companies doing it but we still see a lot of the same old model and and again if i'm just going to spend 20 bucks and play the game for 10 hours and it was rotten i don't feel that bad about it but the prop is it was 80 dollars canadian at least to buy anthem yeah. thankfully there was a subscription so i could try it it <clears throat> i have up-to-date system it didn't even run properly on my computer i meet specs mm-hmm. and it didn't even run properly and every other game i throw out this pc meets specs unless it's clearly a graphics card issue mm-hmm. so which i just bought a new one yeah um i heard about that so to me, the article smacked of, and it's not the first article, it's Jason, Jason's writ of this nature, smacks of of this need to have like really epic launches and announcements and stuff like that. It, it reminds me of the Diablo 3, Diablo 3 issue where mm. they ended Diablo 3. Clearly there's going to be another expansion and then internally they killed it and mm. they didn't tell their community. Yeah. And that kind of stuff really bothers me because I played... Played hundred, I'm close to maybe a thousand hours in Diablo three, and you mm-hmm. don't have the courtesy just to say like, "Hey, we're not making any more. We're, we're going to work on something else. There'll be more Diablo." Like any any communication stuff like that, where companies get too scared mm-hmm. to be honest about failings <coughs> because of stakeholders and corporate crap and all that stuff. That it's like me saying, "Well, cheetahs shouldn't run fast. Like they just do, right?" <laughs> it's like companies behave the way they do, and they have to but it's really unfair to gamers and they need to change the way that they talk about these things and about their failures and stop worrying about these earnings callings and stuff like I, that. I mean, it, it I tend, doesn't... I tend to agree. I don't know if much of it's going to change, but I do tend to agree with this. And it was also Jason and Kotaku who broke that very notion of blizzard had a second expansion in the works. What makes that story even worse is that second expansion to Diablo got canceled before the first expansion launched. So yeah. they were so still in the mire about what they think went wrong with Diablo three, despite its you know astronomic sales, uh, not working out with the real money auction house and stuff. That the suits were like, well, we'll just let's just scrap that second one, get this other one out, and let's you know they didn't have faith in it, and that team worked their a's off to make two point you know loot two point slash Reaper of Souls answer all the major problems and it did in spades and it was amazing 
and to know that that expansion was canned before they even got to gauge how well that second one would do really burns my shivers. It's not even a phrase. I made that up. That's how mad I am. Right. So there's no community involvement in that decision. (laughs) John's going, yeah, burns my shivers. (laughs) You know, (laughs) shiver me burnings. Yeah, yeah. Um, But, 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 uh, sorry, I'll stop monologuing in a second here. But the thing that bothers me is it really feels like, at least in the Anthem case, you know, we invest how many millions of dollars over the course of those five years? Like 30 million, 50 million. I don't know what a gaming AAA development budget is for a dylan's level project remember they were going to call this the bob dylan of gaming so they must have poured a lot of sweetheart money into this um where they're just looking at well we have to recover some money so even if it's a church we just launch it if we recoup 50 percent of the costs our losses covered and i'm like we're not freaking cash milk cows mm. just eat the loss just can anthem do the blizzard thing you know blizzard's respected for doing stuff like that i hate it when they do it post launch but yeah pre-launch we didn't we never got titan yeah. for probably the same reason as it would have had the fate of anthem and and i just really hate to hear everything that's in there because i feel like it treats gamers like well oh, they'll give us some money for it you know we can have an origin pass in the play and we'll get some money out of it. like it just felt like the the company was like let's just try and recoup what we can from this turd <laughs> yeah and that, that's what it feels like. And mm-hmm. I'm like, avoid and origin uh, back to wanting to uninstall it. In fact, I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> Sorry, I meant to do it. Do it right on the show. Why not? Um, yeah, because that might be an EA thing and not a Bioware thing, but like, it's really unfair to treat people that way. It's yeah. Really unfair. I mean, I, uh, I don't have much to disagree with. John, mind. do you have any uh, thoughts on that that veer it all away from Poe's point? No, I mean, I'm probably not quite as to Bo's level of extreme feeling on it. I mean, maybe it's just I've seen so much of it that it's, you know, it is what it is. Um, I don't blame a game company for trying to make, you know, what they can off of the game. I don't feel like a bad game shouldn't be put out just because they know it's bad. I think consumers have to be savvy. I think it's the reason why people shouldn't pre-order games. I think it's the reason why people should try to, you know, I think a lot of us suspected that Anthem wasn't going to be good. I think some of us, uh, I certainly fell for the magic to a degree where I was like, maybe this, maybe there's something here. And I still think there is, I think there is a world where Anthem is a decent video game. Mm. I don't know how long we have to go to get there, and I don't know that EA or BioWare are going to be able to put in the time, effort, and money to do it, but there is a core concept there that is solid. Um, There's a gameplay mechanic that I really like, Mm -hmm. and so, you know, there was a level of getting pulled in and feeling like oh i'm gonna yeah maybe they're gonna maybe they're gonna pull this off and some of that was also on the back of mass effect andromeda as you said okay well this game is god awful yeah but maybe we're killing mass effect so that anthem can live right you know maybe this is our goat sacrifice so we can have an amazing game um in anthem and you know, as a longtime Mass Effect fan, I probably would have told you, well, how about we not do that? Because I would rather Mass Effect be good than Anthem be good. But it was in the back of your head, nonetheless, was, okay, well, maybe this is where all the attention and money and time and effort went into. Um, but no, it had the exact same problems as what you heard with Andromeda. And it's it, it's unfortunate. And I think probably the most unfortunate aspect is that after this article went up, in fact, immediately after, to a degree where there's a fairly firm belief that the article was not even read before the response was written and posted, uh, Bioware responded to uh, Jason Schreier's uh, article. And to me, the most disappointing thing in the whole thing is at the very, very end of their piece, it's generally speaking, they're talking about how they don't know how games are going to be. And, you know, we we believe in our team and we believe in our people and making games is hard. But the part that's really frustrating for me is they end the piece with, we don't see the value in tearing down one another or one another's work. We don't believe articles that do that are making our industry and craft better. Boo. 
And that is such a shitty response to this entire situation. It's shockingly bad. Because if you read the article, yeah. which again, I don't know that they did, you would see that this is a piece not condemning Bioware, but instead more saying, come on, we need to look at these conditions and the situations that developers are finding themselves in and make it better and do what we can to make their lives better and hopefully in turn our games better. Mm -hmm. Like it actually was a very positive, uplifting piece talking about a shitty subject. And it's kind of heartbreaking for me to hear that response where they jump in and, and just sort of say, oh, you just got to be so negative all the time. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's, that's that's what the situation is. What you guys did was the negative thing. Mm -hmm. You you went through hell like I empathize with the people at Bioware. And I would love to see the response be, you know what? We have a lot we have to learn and take from this. Mm -hmm whether that's in Anthem or whether that's in whatever's next, because uh, that's the response to articles like this that they need to have. They well, need not to even, not, it. it doesn't even have to be canned. Uh, we're not, uh, John and I, and I agree with you. I'm, I don't think you're asking for them to have a canned response that is, you know, all the things we want to hear. What I want is honesty and take your part in this. Like the problem isn't that uh, journalists who are interested in what's happening behind the scenes with people's games and high value products that are, you know, some of these people paid eighty hundred dollars for, um, for collectors editions that gave them a week's early access to the stupid thing. Uh, I I would like people asking questions on my behalf. I don't have the wherewithal to sneak behind the scenes at Bioware and say what the hell went wrong with this game you promised me, but they do. So there there, there is a service there, and if you don't want people saying bad things about your crappy product, don't make a crappy product. And this isn't just people yelling on a forum or Reddit. This is people doing their work, doing their homework, checking their sources, and putting it all together in something somebody can read so that we can see the, the full inside and outside of this. That is the actual journalism happening here. And it's good, strong stuff. It's stuff we don't get any other way. So what they come off as feeling in that letter to me is they're mad that somebody's calling them out on it, not that they sucked at their launch. They sucked at it. They don't, they're acting like they don't own any of that. It's like, well, right. no, well, you totally do. And not only that, you made a bunch of money off the backs of the good faith of players who are screwed out of their money in cases where they can't get refunds or whatever. And now, or, or you've got to somehow prove, prove to them over what will probably take another two or three years of development that you can get the game to a playable enough state where that player is like, I've moved on. I'm playing something else now that isn't your game. Yeah, it's no different than uh, going into a little kid's room and he's eating cookies before dinner and the little kid gets mad at you and is like, what are you doing in my room? That's not the issue we're addressing right now. The right. issue isn't I came into the room. The issue is you were eating cookies before dinner. Right. That's the problem. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good one. You Please totally acknowledge <laughs> that you're eating cookies. No, you shouldn't have been in my room. No, because what you're doing at the heart of things is the issue and that's what needs to be addressed and just waving it off as oh people are so critical mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's that's their complaint is people are too critical and we don't think that makes our craft better oh i i disagree it holds you holds you to account and yeah you're just one blip in the history of my video game fandom you're one tiny game in a sea of games that i looked forward to and that either thrilled me were mediocre or disappointed me whatever level they came out on so at the end of the day yes you were just this one in a long string of things but be held to account for the thing you did. Like, it's bad. And own up to it. And if people are having a really hard time internally, that's bad for the future. You're not going to have good games moving forward. I absolutely do not think that the next... Uh, they teased it last E3, but the next um, Dragon Age game is either nowhere near ready or in some chaos state. Like, I have zero faith in that now, and I love that series. Like, I was, yeah. I, I would be genuinely stoked for a quality release. Inquisition was pretty damn good, and there's a lot of talk out there. If you do a little research, you can find similar stories behind the development of that game, and then Crunch just happened to work in their favor. Like that I was... think it actually shows in Inquisition. I am I liked Inquisition. Yeah. I was not overwhelmed by it, and I think when you look at that game on paper the net result is a fun game that you enjoy 
but when you kind of look at the component parts of it you're like this game is weird and should not exist there are, you can spend almost the entire game in one zone because the game never really tells you to go be anywhere else that's a good it point unlocks yeah. the ability to do it but you can just run around the <laughs> hinterlands forever and then all of a sudden you run out of quests there and you go oh wait okay i should go somewhere else oh i'm at the end of the game what yeah it's like world of warcraft but you can go from level one <laughs> to 115 in the first zone killing wolves and the game encourages that and never tells you you can go anywhere else and then it's like oh yeah by the way you can go other places here's like eight other places you can go that's to. actually a good that you said that because how i played that game was hearing before i played it don't don't get stuck thinking you're supposed to stay in the hinterlands go to that portal at about level 10 or whatever it was i don't remember uh, and get out of there and you, now you get a whole brand new map to deal with and I didn't I, I would not have known otherwise so so you're probably right and I think the tail end of that game is really strong uh, again I don't know if that's crunch I don't know what that is but the point is like this is not this is not Bioware independently being able to choose what they want to choose and polish down to the to a fine sheen the way that they did in their old days before they were acquired they're just not that company anymore, and neither is the leadership of that company. They're all gone. So part of this is we just need to stop thinking Bioware is going to be awesome again, at least until they show us. They just need to prove it. We need to quit uh, throwing money at them saying, well, maybe this time. Like, I'm not going well, to. I'm so, I'm so so burned and bummed about Anthem. It's, it's painful, like how we, sad that makes me. We also need to see EA learn its lesson, and they clearly haven't. Um, we just, I don't remember if we talked about it on the show, but just like a week or so ago, they laid off a bunch of employees, huge firings at EA as well. And when they gave their, you know, speech, much like Blizzard did, of, oh, we're going to help these people, we're giving them severance packages, they're going to land on their feet. Um, the, one of the things they said is, oh, but we're also going to keep a lot all of our developers and we're going to really double down on making sure that frost uh, the frostbite engine is properly supported and trained for it mm -hmm. the frostbite engine is hot garbage i could have told you that before i read this article <laughs> because i have yet to play a frostbite game that actually looks plays and executes 100 percent great there's always something damn weird about it even ones where you're like oh this looks really good there's something weird about it every yeah. time it's a beautiful engine was, it looks great but there's something under the hood i don't think it does oh i every think it time does i see one of those games you can see like oh this, this vista is really amazing and then some dead fish person looks at you in the <laughs> eyes and talks and you're like what the hell just happened here um, i don't think that game i don't think those games look consistent you get the impression if somebody says, hey, Frostbite's really hard to program for because there's no real tools for it. It's all in-house and it's all messy. That surprises me absolutely not, which is what this article goes into yeah. because all those games are weird as hell. Yeah, no, you're right. I, now that you say it, it's inconsistent. You know what it feels like? It always feels like, hey, they figured they, they used, and this always impressed me, but I'm, I'm being impressed by a shiny bobble and I shouldn't be, but what they've done is they've taken a shooter. It always feels like they took a shooter engine, which is where Frostbite had its origins, and jammed it into an RPG, jammed it into their looter shooter, jammed it into whatever other thing. And then there, there are weird. There's weird things with that, like there are load times that shouldn't exist. There are. I totally agree with this. Just use Unreal, EA. Quit being babies. You have the money. And, and or if you want to make Frostbite really awesome, keep working on it behind the scenes. But Maybe that maybe that ship has sailed. I don't know. That's a that's a pretty good point that you make. Anyway, there's a lot to read up on this if you want to. Um, Jason put up a tweet four hours ago as a bit of a follow up. He says, on a related note, I'm told by a couple of Bioware employees that so far studio management hasn't talked to staff about the article. Instead, the company sent out emails yesterday with one main message, which was, quote, don't talk to the press, unquote. So it sounds like uh, they're you know just trying to put out fires and not really addressing the, the symptoms um well, really and we did hear from casey hudson as well this was uh just recently as well 
saying, I think some people are seeing our support for our developers named in the article as dismissing the need to continue making improvements in our workplace. Not at all. Part of what interested me about returning to BioWare was the challenge of building a new leadership team around solving precisely these problems. We have more to do, but creating a happy and rewarding work environment remains our top priority. That all sounds very good, but Casey, again, my issue is saying that the article was negative and just insulting and that doesn't do anything productive. You're wrong. We're talking about it. It is productive. Yeah. No, it's literally, it's the catalyst for change, potentially. Uh, whether they act on that or not is still up to EA, but that's silly. That's like saying, oh my gosh, somebody in this office took a giant shit on the toilet lid. They didn't even open the lid. There's just a shit in there. Oh, I don't know that this negative talk is going to help us have cleaner bathrooms here, Scott. Is that's like that that would be like what that's saying. No, I brought it to your attention. I have physical proof. I have a, look come look everyone. I didn't clean it. There it is. There's a poo sitting on top of this toilet. We should really do something about that. You know what? You're right. We have bad policies when it comes to toilet stuff. Let's see if we can fix it. That's how you're supposed to do it. Not go, I don't see how telling us about poop on the toilet's going to help anybody. Shut up. I couldn't be more irritated with EA's response or with BioWare's response. I hate it. I hate it. It sucks. I love that you, that this company has policies about using the toilet. <laughs> well, as usual, Mike. Just look, just to be in the bowl. <coughs> what? In my, the bowl. My analogies, look, my analogies are not known for for the quality. They're, they need to be polished and released when they're ready. All right. Okay. Let's move on, shall we? Um, what was this other one from Jason? Hold on, I don't remember why I pulled it out. Uh, oh, he said this too. He says, I've got a number of messages from developers who work or worked at beloved AAA studios saying, quote, replace Bioware with my studio name and it's the same story. He says, which is heartbreaking, but I can imagine, uh, I can't imagine anything changes unless we keep reporting and talking about these stories. Here, here, I totally agree with that. Well, I mean, it's yeah. basically our version of whistleblowing for mm -hmm. gaming is what he's sort of doing. Protection of anonymity, telling details that gamers want to know. Mm -hmm. I get I get why the companies have to protect it. But again, we're being asked to spend a lot of time playing these games. We're not building these little two hour experiences like, you know, investigative journalism into why. Who had a movie that sucked recently right. that was supposed to be good? Like, can you think of an example? I can't, but like, um, um, how about okay? What movie was supposed to be good that was just awful? Like uh, the so Justice League. Oh, there you go. Sure, Zack yeah. Snyder, all that stuff. Like some investigative journalism goes in there, but if you see Justice League and you didn't like it, you might rant about it, but you're not really. You like just it. say, ah, oh, DC movies are bad, man, and then a new, they were good. Yeah, yeah. and but then like, one will come you out. Didn't and, spend right. eighty hours. You know, playing the game and, and being like, maybe if I give the money, it'll get better soon. And, and you know, like not knowing just the turd storm that happened prior to it and that it's in a state you shouldn't be playing because the game looks good enough. You or know, or $59 US, uh, 80 Canadian or something. Like movies, the comparison, man, I, I, I agree with you so much. I'm having a hard they time. They want you to play hundreds hours. of hours. And some people have played lots of time in this game already. And it, it's just, it's such a, it's, it just feels bad. It just feels like, you know, I give them my money, I give them my time, and they don't even have the respect to put out something that's worthy of people's time. We don't get a lot left before we die. I don't want to spend hundreds of hours playing something that people, that is um, the result of, of office bureaucracy and, and no one having a vision for the game and, and not respecting customers' time. Do you think there's a bit of a paradox happening because... On the one hand, they want to rush stuff to market and hit their dates for sales reasons. Mm -hmm. And when they rush their stuff to market to meet dates, they just piss off players who then lose faith in the company and therefore go somewhere else because it's a big competitive world with lots of game choices now. Uh, like, it, it's such like an... That's, that's the other side of it, right? Like, it's... It's a huge point of failure, I guess. You know how, like, um, we talk about computer security and all your points of failure, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to have one point of failure in your home security, like where everything's right. just undermined completely. So financially, a point of failure is, a you know, spending $50 million on a game that's going to do a million in sales or something. You know, like, it's not why they do these things. They do it to make buttloads of cash. Right. And they look at what other companies are doing. And they go, oh, we can do that, too. We can have our own launchers. 
we can make our own World of Warcraft. Yeah. We can make our own card game. And and what what people don't realize is that not everyone approaches gaming with the same respect that Wizards of the Coast or Blizzard does or other certain companies that are institutions known for that. There are companies out there willing to put out turds and <laughs> just take your money and mm-hmm. and and then just be like, whoa, we're just a game company. Don't be so hard on us and publish crap articles calling us out on this stuff. Because again, it's not like it's the Joker who's running a secret organization to steal your money at the game company. Mm-hmm. It's just a bunch of dudes working in an office being like, please don't fire me. Okay, this idea is good. <laughs> I'll just say I like it. And everyone's like, why don't they like our game? We all did our job. And, you know, like, and, and I really think gaming, it's like filmmaking, you know, when. Uh, how do you say his name? Taika? Taika Wakatiti. When Taika, they're like, you're a filmmaker and you make cool shit. Like, make a Thor movie. And it's amazing. Yeah. And it's because of him. Yeah. And they touted Casey Hudson, but the guy left mid-development. Yeah. It should, it's like bringing back Zack Snyder to more, more DC movies. Like, that ship has sailed. Yeah. Don't let him back in. Like, it's done. Well, in his case. Or Josh, like, bringing Joss Whedon back to do Avengers. Like, that's done. Yeah. And, and, and so... That was probably a bad move on their part, but they couldn't find somebody to replace him. They probably should just can the game and just worked on something else at that point instead of trying to take people's money to shore up their losses. I would have been way I would have been way disappointed had they canceled it. I would have been way less disappointed than what I am now with what they did. So I'm mm-hmm. with Bo. The lesser of the two disappointments is can your game, or at the very least, say you know what we've had some rethinks. We're gonna you, we're gonna take another you, year, two years, whatever you need, but don't release garbage. You, you can't be a CEO of a company and then cry when your product fails that people are too hard on you. Yeah, that part no is my CEO, biggest. Who, how, no company ugh, gets that. How dumb is your CEO? Okay, I'm going to try not to be too rude here. <laughs> how dumb are you, though, that you don't see the obvious thing when you say that at the end of your letter? Like when you say, we think this kind of you know, talk is the struggles and challenges making video games are real. And then them going to say, we don't see the value in tearing down one another and others work. We don't believe articles that do uh, that are making our industry or craft better. How did you write that with any kind of self-awareness and not know how that sounds? Like you're just, you're saying we'd, uh, we'd prefer to do the shit we're doing in the dark and the garbage we shovel. We'd like to not have any scrutiny. We just want to be over here away from you. Like what a what a tone deaf piece of poopy that is. Yeah, the the company values are corrupted. They're they're not adhering to. It. If I sell cars that explode tomorrow, and I'm just like, whoa, we're just trying to make cars, man. Like some people got hurt, but like, <laughs> it's hard making cars. Yeah, you, you drag me out in the street and shoot me to death. Like they, you know, it's, it's and because it's gaming and it's just people's time and and gamers are just kind of losers anyway they just spend time playing like we can just take their money and like they, they like to bitch and complain on the internet but like really mm-hmm. and i'm like no no you got to respect customers mm-hmm. f that like that sorry i'm getting into swear land i apologize for the swears oh yes f, but it makes me that. mad it makes <laughs> me mad that th- that companies and that people who defend it think it's okay to be like yeah game development is hard but that doesn't excuse what i see to be sort of rampant and pretty corrupt behavior and and it might just be adherence to old values and an old model that doesn't work if you want to sell a game that you're asking me please play 500 hours of this game and spend a thousand dollars in microtransactions yeah misfit reminds us in the chat that um remember the game was uh supposed to be released last september and got delayed so we got it in what was it early february uh he says just imagine how that old one must have looked like they must have really by all accounts the old one in the article said it looked better well maybe it did <laughs> yeah. they made a good demo and they're like for their ceo that guy who flew all the way from stockholm or whatever they're like oh we need to make it good and he was like this is amazing this is what we should make and they're like oh it doesn't work on all the cross platforms and blah 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 yeah i mean it, it also kind of worked like i said it worked on me i played a really good early demo early on uh last year and I was like, this seems like this could be really something because I was playing a very uh, select chunk mm-hmm. that was going from one to two to three and like very guided. And it was very much th- the areas that when you see it as a whole, you're like, mm, this isn't good. Weren't as readily apparent in those situations because it was like, here's a cool action crazy scene. OK, now we're talking to this guy. Now you're back out in the mech doing a thing. And you're like, all right, all right. 
you don't see that the connective tissue to that is standing in a weird, freaky robot world where you just walk up to people that don't move or do anything, but just sit there with their arm like at a weird angle, like waiting for you to talk to them. And then they're like, hello. <laughs> I love how drilled down specific yeah. you got there. That was a specific, like, traumatic experience that caused <laughs> really you enough trauma. Was. That your, your brain remember because your brain remembers traumatic experiences to teach you right when to flee when danger comes. That's why yeah. when your you your pants fall off in the middle of uh, high school graduation, you remember it for the rest of your life because of the intense fear your brain feels and it imprints it. Bo, I so that a... person leaning there, John, I imagine John sitting there, his brain imprinting. Oh my god. I that sense a story horrible. you've never told us about high school. One day you'll I, have to tell us. No, my pants didn't fall. I know, no oh, kidding. my pants didn't fall off in high school, but at camp in grade six. I don't know if that means anything. No, here here in America we just call it sixth grade, but that's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, um we we were at a camp and spent a week at a summer camp, and so there's about 40, 50 grade sixth graders. And we're all gathered around this thing and they're giving a presentation, and one of my my friends, uh, of course decides he's gonna pants the dude uh given the speech mm -hmm. you think pants pull it down and see his underwear and it'd be embarrassing go in commando no. yeah dog yeah. in front of 60 kids and the kids just ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's like 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 an explosion of children wow uh so i'm definitely that's horrifying I was, the, I was behind so i saw harry buttocks but it was it was it was funny. It was good. It's a good memory. I remember it. Harry, specifically uh, Harry, but but yeah. I mean, I, when you're younger, you're not that hairy. So when you actually see for the first time how hairy an adult male can be, yeah, it, it's just it'll it, throw it, you. It looks, it's like watching the Alien movies or something. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. I had the ax I had the opposite experience today. Somebody was passing around. I think I retweeted it on Twitter, but somebody was passing around an image of a shaved bear. You have no idea what a bear shaved looks like. It is horrifying. It looks like an <laughs> alien cat from hell. It I has to, to be. This. You have to see it. It's just, it's like, what the freaking yeah. F? What is that? It's, it would scare me so bad. More than a real bear oh ever would. God. This is like a oh, D&D monster. It. Yeah. Do you see it's that like thing? It's a D&D monster. Yeah. I like that they left a head of hair on top uh, of it. <laughs> it looks like Kramer. <laughs> Let's leave him his dignity. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Let's see if I can, I should. Wow, that now. little it's like an elephant it looks like an elephant with a wolf head yeah it's jacked up oh here it is chat yeah. here let's let the chat room see it here you go let's look at oh it. God, that's yeah it's cool. really scary looking i think yeah. you see that in the woods I, i'm out of there <laughs> someone even made a joke magic card shave bear yeah it's really <laughs> um, really gross yeah. anyway that yeah. thing needs some I was gonna say oil oh, or sorry. some lotion or yeah. something anyway yes bo I was just gonna say the one thing that that I remember John saying about Anthem was that last I guess last week they increased the amount of fly time by twenty percent, mm. and yeah. they're like, "Oh, it's like you have a fun meter right there." And in the article, uh, they took out flying, and then they flew the e EA Stockholm guy. I don't remember what his name, the dice guy. And oh god, this is horrifying. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, they flew him out and they put flying back in i think it was perma flying even and he's like this is what i meant because he was pissed about the state of the game he's like you made the game fun make this like and i, I thought of you immediately as i was reading that and i'm yeah. like oh even the ceo and ceo of the ex-ceo of uh ea and uh john agree on the fun meter thing yeah so internally well, people inside were like man when you let people fly everywhere this game sure is fun and not the turd that it is and they're like well we can't let them fly why couldn't they they could have made a game where they flew it's fine have them hover because all the sweet assets and world discovery you'll just fly it's the world of warcraft yeah. problem and and it's it's horseshit in anthem what because is... i've seen the ground in anthem and there's not a damn interesting thing on the ground down there yeah like, let people I... fly yeah. When I hear the the Blizzard devs talk about, oh, we don't want you to fly until the patch. We want you to experience it from the ground up. At least I get where they're coming from. They put a ton of artistry and time, and they clearly think about vistas, and they clearly imagine these things, and they put challenges in front of you that has a logic and flow to it, and they don't want you just going boop straight up into the air and then back down somewhere else and doing something. Like, it makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. In Anthem... It's just this bizarre, like empty, weird space. It's like, did did either of you ever play Fantasy Star Online? Oh yeah, 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 lots no, of I it. Didn't. 
I did. Do you remember how that world looked yeah. when you weren't fighting a creature? Yeah, That's what Anthem basically... It looks like a pretty that. Like, a lot of green foliage and water, and here's some rocks, and ooh, it's, it's great. But there's not a damn interesting thing to see in that world. I kind of agree. There's no exploratory nature to it, other than the, the initial, like, ooh, wow, okay. There's, like, machines as part of the rock structure here, I guess. And, like, some of that stuff jumps out, and it's pretty neat. But that's it. Like there, once you've seen a couple of those th those structures, you're like, okay, well, what else now? And and nothing. Like it's just a place to find targets. Most of those structures look better from the air, where you go, whoa, what's this? And then you go land, and you're like, ah, it's a ruin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, chat room's having a discussion about how City of Heroes and the DC game and some others do a really good job with flying in an MMO environment. Totally agree. Those games are great. City of Heroes yeah. was great. Still a crime that game got canceled. It should have been. There should have been a City of Heroes two. Is what should have happened. Can't can't someone make like a, another clone, like not City of Heroes, but just make the superhero game that's missing by now? Call it City of uh, Superheroes. That way, with no infringement on trademarks. Well, City of superheroes. City of superheroes. Uh, just, just make someone make that game. Like I think I'll, I, every time I, a lot of people just think of that game fondly. Like I, I haven't heard anyone's like God. That game was garbage. Everyone loved playing. I it. loved it. It was great. It was very. Um, I mean, I don't know visually if it would hold up now, just given how far we've come. This was pre WoW even, but but the uh, if they were allowed to update it, I guess it could look cool. But the. Um, the character creator in that game was unbelievable. Just unbelievable. The, the minute I walked in there, I, I'll never forget this. I make a character in that game, and I'm not mm -hmm. being too creative. I'm like, well, what kind of cool character would I be? I'm not trying to dupe anything. Then I mm -hmm. pop into the world, and immediately I see somebody named, and this is literally his name over his head, Tiny Hulk. And I look at him, <laughs> and he's a little tiny Hulk. He's buff as hell, looks like an angry face, all big green, has little purple shorts. No <laughs> shoes, and it says Tiny Hulk above his head. And I went, oh, we can go that far with this? And I start looking around, and there's Wolverine over there. And there, and none of these are – you You have to be creative to make them look right because there's no pre-built kit to look like Spider-Man. There, It's yeah. not a Marvel game. It was meant to be not one. But it had so much – so many tools in the character creator thing. You could make anything in there. It was amazing. Oh, I miss that game. It was so cool. Yeah. And with the prevalence of the Marvel movies and all of that right now, I mean, superhero movies, superheroes have never been bigger. And uh, we can't come up with a good superhero video game. Not one. Well, I mean, there's been stuff like uh, Avengers Ultimate Alliance was awesome. There's a new one of those coming. Spider-Man was um, good, right? Spider-Man was amazing. Well, Spider-Man Spider was game. really good. But I, I I mean, one where you can make your own superhero. Well, just, DC Universe like Online is still kicking it and doing well. Um, and I did play it, and I did like it, even though I created the most OP thing that ever existed. <laughs> I created a, a Green Lantern Kryptonian on Earth. Oh, wow. So I had all the powers of Superman plus a Green Lantern ring. That's it was just great. the most, like, and I also get to, like, people already make fun of Superman for having too many powers, and I was like, yeah, but what if he had more? Yeah, yeah, yeah that was game was good. Game. So was... um. I mean, you couldn't create your own characters. You could pick them, though. But I love that Diablo-like one that they just shut down. That was the Marvel oh, yeah. Heroes 2017 was the last version. I, I enjoyed that one. But that works more like Diablo, where you play the hero yeah. and it's the class. But yeah, exactly. It was good. That was a good game. But a uh, game where you where you and your friends, in a modern context, like an MMO built around heroes again. I mean, maybe I just don't understand the competitive nature of MMOs right now and how that money is so not split evenly between everybody making a thing. Uh, there's like two or three that do really well and the rest are scrambling so maybe there's just no room for it anymore but i think it's probably just they view it as more cost effective to make to skip out on the world part yeah just make a small uh, game people go through the world and then never touch it but do lfds and do raids and stuff so why not just make a game that's that yeah but so, it's it's also like in the per like right now the looter shooter is the most popular thing known to man and it fits that mold so perfectly mm -hmm. you and your friends all make superheroes now go out in the world and you're we're gonna drop new powers and new costume pieces and all of this and we can segment it into story arcs that make sense with rise of villains and stuff like that like it fits that mold so perfect that it's just a case of why hasn't anybody done this yet? yeah who, superhero who movies it? are so big right now like well uh, I'm sure gosh i hope it'd be great if we if uh, disney had a had a relationship with a huge studio to make games like this 
oh whoops it's all ea right now hmm. yeah oh uh anyway i don't want to be a ea basher because i know that's easy but still well they did just try and screw people out of money with anthem so they did be mad at them. they've had a rough go lately star wars cancellations star wars, actual star wars game that came out was not well received very controversial problems problems but they, but the other thing i think i guess they make all their money with fifa so they don't care it's all just oh yeah that screw, fifa money that just comes uh, that fifa money. money comes out of their butts man they have so much fifa money they don't know what to do with it all you well, forget also about apex audience. now apex you know, legends that, yeah yeah they have a hit at the moment yeah they have a Fortnite. everyone says i get the impression that um what's the name of that company again that does it respawn respawn yeah they're not like super it's like it almost seems like maybe it's a bungee situation where bungee couldn't get away wait to get away from activision blizzard maybe i, I mean they, i get that impression but it could be articles tainting the perspective uh, i know they didn't the love company. the underperformance or the under underperforming promotion they received for their titanfall games especially two yeah. and they i mean ea even put titanfall 2 up against one of their own franchises with battlefield that year and just obscured it and i don't think respawn's happy about that by any stretch but i don't think they had the wherewithal to do this without them i bet well, they could now that if they can get out of that contract get the h out of there dude so weird question didn't we didn't i hear that apex was built on the source engine uh, yeah. Yes, it's a heavily, heavily so modified weird. source engine. So weird that this is like a source engine game is not on Steam too. So, so I was like thinking about that today. I'm like, that's so weird. But it's not and pure I realize source because it's, it's an EA thing. But I'm like, like the right. story about Anthem is you got to use Frostbite. Why aren't they going to respawn and being like, you got to use Frostbite? And and the part of the article that's like, you get your tech support for Frostbite. The amount of time you get is proportional to your sales within the company. So if you want more. Uh, technical support for frostbite do more sales than fifa mm. can't do more sales than fifa sorry fifa's getting all the love so like if you're a company who needs those resources to make a, an awesome game and they don't give it to you because you're not fifa yeah. which is well, part of the commentary it's not bioware's fault in the in the in the jason article yeah is ea then i'm like well clearly they don't care that much we care a lot <laughs> But they don't care that much about the consumers who <laughs> well so, RPGs, side note so, uh yeah. the fifa is also in the in the in the uh frostbite engine just for just for shits and giggles all their games are now yeah but i mean if you have all the technicians and engineers who are good with it mm -hmm. lay everything out for you make your life easy mm -hmm. you're like and they've been doing how many versions of fifa games they're probably like have solved a lot of problems and iterated on it whereas like anthem was like we want to make the bob dylan of video games a new bold venture and they're like ah we'll give you 10 hours of engineer time hopefully that's enough here's what they should have done this is what they should have done they should have made uh anthem should have been a top-down isometric soccer game but the ball is a <laughs> exploding ball <laughs> exploding ball everyone's dressed up in mecha suits and it's really just soccer though then you've got your hit everything's done yeah. it's um, sci fifa yeah there you go sci -fi -fa. I, the only sci -fi -fa. thing i was going to say what was the other thing i was going to say oh despite the fact that uh that source engine stuff that they're using is really, I mean, it's barely recognizable as source anymore, but that's its, yeah, that's its origins. Um, I don't think it's that weird that it wouldn't appear on Steam because... No, it's not weird, but I'm just like, why, you know, they're compete like, EA is not publishing on Steam anymore, right? Because they have Origin. They have some yeah. games on Steam, but yeah, mostly yeah. Origin. But it just seems a little, you know... I don't know they don't put new like stuff also, on Steam. Yeah. just to call back a little bit, isn't it weird that the one game they've put out recently, not in Frostbite, happens to be the one that did well? Mm. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. That's what I mean. Like, it's it's kind of a shameful mark. Like, I'm just like, I don't know. I don't wonder what the internal politics is on that. Because It looked really you know, good in the... What's the, what's the Chinese lady running through town in the white city? What's that called? What? Little Chinese lady sliding under Mirror, doors. Mirror's, Mirror's Edge. Edge. That's the one. Oh. <laughs> I think she's American. But, I think yeah. she's Asian. Really? I think she's Asian. Well, she's Asian, but I mean, okay, so. I mean of descent. I don't mean like she may have. PC over here. Right. No, that's fine. She's but definitely Chinese. But she's of, yeah, she's of a Chinese descent. But anyway, she that game looked real pretty. It looked all right. And that was Frostbite. So it was all right. I think, I think the issue is that good games can be made in Frostbite. It just sounds like it requires a lot more work from people skilled with it. It's like a higher need, needed skill set. Yeah. So and I don't know what a comparison is, but it just sounds like it's not Unity you can, and Unreal. You can download for free and start plugging in things and getting to work. It's pretty easy and intuitive, but if your Frostbite sounds like it's like, 
put a hammering nails into your own feet to try and didn't, work with it. Yeah. Didn't you just tweet the other day, Scott? Imagine your life without. Or, no, I might imagine my life without copy with and paste. I think I did that. Okay, yeah. I am mixing up tweets. I thought for a moment you because I, I had a coworker say, "Imagine life without Google oh. or or a, or a search engine, the ability to stop and go." Oh, I wonder about that and yeah. just search for it. Yeah. My understanding from the article and, and things I've heard is that's what programming for Frostbite is. If I'm a developer and I'm writing code and I go, oh, I don't know how to make the engine do this. I don't get to just Google it. I have to reach out and contact somebody who's an expert with it and troubleshoot it and figure it out because there's no guides for it. Mm. So there is no like, oh, I'll just figure it out on my own or I'll talk to somebody who knows that language real casually. It's such a small club that you don't have the ability to just research problems yourself. Mm. So it's, okay, well, I can't solve this problem. So I guess I'm either not doing any work today or I'm moving on to something else and hopefully don't need this problem resolved before i figure that out well do you want it here's my, by the way we're launching in six weeks yeah 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 here's my impression of one of those support calls voicemail that never gets answered you ready yeah. uh yeah i'm calling back again i'm the guy that's trying to reduce uh load times from 500 minutes down to 30 seconds could you please call me back we have to ship this game soon click i'll bet that guy never got called back because the load times were gross. Oh, the load times on shared services within. Oh, yeah. it was so bad. No, I mean the load time in the game. It was ridiculous. Like it's I, horrible. It was the it's, worst it's, I've ever seen ever in my life. It's just it, with with games on its level, uh, Diablo, Warframe, Destiny, anything you might compare it, have no have minimal load screens. Yeah. Minimal like five to ten seconds tops. I would, by the way, like to invite all... I know we have some devs who listen to the show because we hear from them. Uh, various positions and companies that are making video games. If if we are just completely dumb and idiots here, just send us messages and we'll we'll do corrections next week. No, we're not dumb and idiots because we're consumers and all consumers don't have internal... We're not, we shouldn't be expected to have internal knowledge no. about how a games company works. We no. just know what we like and they're trying to meet our needs. Yeah, so. I all just right. mean like we don't know what they're copying and paying. We don't know. We have no idea. No, Scott we don't know how to make corrections. Well, that's, why, that's why I top that it's like I understand this thing is hard and we take a lot of things for granted. Right, so that's absolutely all, true. That's we prefaced it. Well, then let's do this. Hey, good news! I think I found the thing that will get Bo to get the Epic Store on his PC without complaining about it. Turns out, Borderlands Three is not only coming. We had all that news last week. We talked about it ad nauseum, but now we have heard officially. And I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it was an April Fool's joke. I really did, uh, just because it seemed like a fun, dumb thing to do. But it's not. Borderlands Three is an Epic Store exclusive. Bo, reaction. Twenty twenty is going to be a great year. because <laughs> they did say, all right, September this year on the Epic Store for PC players. For console people, you're just getting what you're getting. Uh, or. You wait till 2020 when it's no longer an exclusive. And the, the timed exclusive ends and it shows up in Steam and other places. Uh, really? You're not going to... you got to get it in September. You really aren't going to do this. It's just a, it's a little thing on your desktop. You only have to ever run it. It's a, buyer's, it's a buyer's market. That game will still be good in six months. I don't need to play it today. <sighs> the, the industry wants me to, to do that, but it's not. that's not necessary. See, the, here's the thing. I learned something new today about this Epic thing. Mm. So the big thing with Epic is developers get more money. That's good for developers. Yeah. Let's just set that aside and say, okay, sure. I like the idea of developers getting more money, even though a lot of the games that they're pushing are probably built in Unreal or using some Unreal license technology. So Unreal's getting its check. The lower money is like not a coincidence. Like for smaller sales games, they'll probably take the hit. But a lot of the third party stuff, they're still getting licensing from using the Unreal tech anyways. Yeah. So they're still getting more than 30% in the long run. May, potentially i'm imagining i think that's their own money. i think that's their own engine though i don't think that they're I using think unreal they even get an additional percent if they use unreal yeah so so i'm not it's possible but i'm not i don't know how many games in the unreal store that don't belong to epic have the unreal engine but i got to assume that's a lucrative deal we'll give you a discount on your licensing for using our engine we'll give you some discounts on the fees like you get more money like why not but here's the thing that i learned today that was reported in polygon I think in various places 
Epic is actually giving lump sum is paying them for the exclusives. Oh yeah, this yeah. isn't just it's a better store, so be here. Yeah, they're like probably the developers are like, well, we do get a better revenue split, but what's stopping me from putting it on all the stores? I'll put it on your store, but I'll put it on the stores our consumers prefer as well. And they're like, okay, here, what are they giving? Here's twenty million dollars. Like, so I'm not picking, I'm not buying a, a game company's thing so that they can benefit. <laughs> yeah from this money like it's i, I this is anti-competitive because then it's just like everything's going to epic game the epic you know it's all epic everything yeah and, and so that's not you're... what the pc platform is about it's about net neutrality it's about providing options and i want game storefronts to compete on the quality of their service not because they paid money to have an yeah but they do this this happens all the time the reason that sony has i'm 100 percent okay if a game if you made the game yeah. if you're blizzard and you made your game and you put it on your own launcher do that that's yeah. not that's not what i'm talking you just about. don't it's want to put party. on somebody else's launcher i don't it's not an appealing way to me to compete by saying for six months we're just having it exclusive then right, how do you right. sell your store, Bo? Yeah. How does it? Here, let me sit. Let me give you a, world, a number of ways. Let me give uh, you a world world compression. There's a list. Hold there on. was a list underneath yeah. that tweet that you sent to me that had all <laughs> the things Epic. So Epic gets hacked <laughs> once a month, for example. Yeah. Valve does not get hacked to that degree that we know of. Um, there's a huge list of things that Steam has built up over the years that we take for granted that Epic does not have. Yeah. And, and so as a consumer, I look at the one that is obviously the better choice of storefront and pick that one. And that's that's how I pick my storefronts. Mm -hmm. So so I don't think, oh, like in six months, it will release on Steam. Now my library is fragmented for no reason. So I can wait six months to have things on my platform of choice. And... And I, I don't want to reward this kind of behavior. So no, I'm not buying Metro Exodus. No, I'm not buying Borderlands 3 on, on the Epic Store. I will play something that's exclusive to the Epic Store that is an Epic game that I need. To, I have an Epic account. When they, um, what was that side-scroller game that they had that they gave away for free, but then you could buy it if you wanted to keep oh, playing? Oh, uh, Shadow Complex? Shadow Complex, yeah. yeah. Great game. I downloaded the Epic Launcher, played Shadow uh, complex was free then i believe i bought it because i had 40 dollars on there i put on that i didn't realize i'd put on like so i'm like oh sweet i'll buy it this is a good game it's worth buying yeah i have an epic account i will if i want to play unreal tournament i will install it but they're getting into the we sell all the games and that's fine but make a better quality storefront than your competitors which I, they have not. i agree but they also have that takes time uh, I'm not excusing them, I, but it does take time. Sure, they can't pre time. they can't build all that out once any more than Steam did because Steam sure didn't. They took forever to do it. No, so, everybody hated Steam. At yeah, first. people hated Steam at first. In fact, my, I never hated Steam. My, well, I guess people did. But I don't in know. the early days, there was trouble. My good friend Brian Dunaway says this quote all the time. I don't like Steam, and I, and he and he didn't like it back then. That's a recording actually from like 2007, um, mm -hmm. because they had some issues then. But here, I want to give you a real world comparison that may or may not offer any light on this. So I worked for a company before I pulled out and did frog pants full time. <laughs> pulled out. Uh, and I, <laughs> I uh, uh, when I worked there, we launched a product that was being, we made it all in China, brought it here to the States. It was for, I, I, don't, I don't have to use names, but basically we were making a, a warmer type thing unit that like ladies would have in their house and inside of it i did all the art for this and concept art so that's why i was working there um and there, a little pouch of like smelly beads would be in the top of this thing and there was like a fan and some heat so when you turn that thing on it had a smartphone app you could tell it to do the fan faster or turn it off or whatever and it would fill your house with nice smells christmas baggies were sold and different holidays and all that we had this whole line that they were having manufactured packaged and done sent here to the States, and then we had meetings with Target and Walmart. And we sat down with Target and Walmart, and at first it was just, well, let's just run them through both stores. But then Target says, hey, we'll give you a bunch of money up front if you'll sell it in our stores early uh, for however long. I don't remember what the time thing was. Basically the exact same thing you're talking about. Some cash up front to make them the exclusive early place to get it, 
and then later Walmart could have it. What, what, what was the product again? It's like, like a it's like a decor warmer thing. It's just this. They were really okay. popular for a while. So was there a lot of hype generated at uh, Decor Three in California before this product <laughs> launched? I mean, I don't know. It doesn't, but it doesn't matter because there's still there was hype. Sure, there were people who were looking forward to get it, and okay. the idea, the tactic of saying, "Oh, well, you're going to give me a little extra money plus a better break on the actual." Uh, you know, your whatever you're taking, uh, your chunk is smaller here than before. I decide to take it over to Walmart, where in where in theory I might have more foot traffic in the long run. Pretty attractive. I think I'll do it. And they did, and it made sense, a hundred percent as a business tactic. I don't know that I would call it dirty. It's just competitive. Business. It's just very yeah. competitive, well, and and it's a competitive in the way that. There's no, you know what? There's uh, here's the other thing no one ever talks about. I'm not defending Epic because I don't really like the store either, not yet. They got a lot of work to do. But mm -hmm. um, Steam has the money to do this. They could do turn around and do the exact same thing. They could be very reactionary on this and go, "Hey everybody, um, yeah, we we probably should adjust our rate split. So we're gonna do that. Plus, uh, hey, three or four games. We're gonna we want you to be exclusives here, and we and they have the bank to do it as much as Epic does." So no. it, it's just it's a tactic a business decides to do or doesn't do that gives them a competitive edge. And in this particular case, there's no way Epic succeeds without it. Honestly, they, they're not going to be able to yeah. do it by themselves. And uh, the only problem I have with your your theory, I understand it at a fundamental level, but it would be like um, if I made uh, uh, I'll just think of it. I make a video game, a little small video game and you make a small video game or better yet. Let's do it this way. We both make chairs. And we want to sell them at Walmart, but you're just pissed at Walmart because they're doing this deal. I'll go to Walmart because that's where the eyeballs and foot traffic is. And that means you have to set up something in your garage with a big sign that says, welcome to Bo's Chair Emporium, and hope that you can get the same level of notoriety in foot traffic. It's just not comparable, right? So the kind of reach that Walmart would have. Well, it's the same with, with Epic or anybody else. Like you can't, you yes, you could go just make your own store, your own launcher, your own website and say, Here's the video game, download it. But they don't get anywhere near the market exposure. Like, not even close. Well, Every wouldn't they get more market exposure if there was both on Epic and Steam on the same launch date and people just picked the storefront they wanted yes. to buy? No, yes. Yes. Yeah, I they, mean, they would, but they wouldn't have the money that they get for free. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you yeah, see what yeah. I'm saying? And, and like, and I, you know what? That's business practice. Like, I'm not, okay, sure, do it. But it's, that's not an enticement. There's a thing called enticement. What is it? You know, when you get a cell phone contract for two years, you yeah. don't just sign up without getting a phone. Right. The phone <laughs> right. is the enticement. Yeah. And so what is my enticement or incentive to put yet another launcher into my life that advertises to me, that tells me about deals, that wants to get me to sign up for their newsletters? I want to manage the kinds of messages and shit I'm getting on my PC. And so they've offered me nothing, yet they want me there, giving them pre-order money, and what we have in their advertising and having it on my launcher and you know and you click through your things you just do it by habit on the stuff that's on there your economy of your attention there's a high demand for it well there's two and enticements there's enticements for the company to do the exclusivity that's number one for and me as a consumer for you as, right but the other one for you as a consumer is play but borderlands 3 in september and not wait a year until 2020 yeah. and it may I not work for you insufficient enticement if it doesn't work thing. for you that i totally get that and i would never i would never poo poo anybody and, for and making I that i feel choice. like it's it's a false enticement because because they're not giving me anything like buy this on the epic store and get some extra skins or get an extra mission pack or like do stuff like that okay maybe i will go to a store to get some sweet free stuff over another store but exclusivity no, that, that no, we I don't like it in console gaming because I'd like to buy I'd like to pick from the three consoles and just play on games on my console. But in PC, there's just no need for it. We're working on the same platform, everyone. It's artificial. And, you know, there it's 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 just I, I'm sick of all the launchers. I don't want 100 launchers. I don't want Steam and Stadia and good old games and Blizzard and Origin and Uplay and like i don't want to have to I, I shouldn't be expected to deal with that for the economy of my attention mm -hmm. so for me i have standards and the standards are going to be um where i feel i'm getting the most value for the attention i give I mean, steam is always putting great sales in front of me and and have great support for their games and have served me well over the past decade i think I'm but when steam there. gets a steam gets a game does it irritate you that it's pretty much only available on steam as a 
platform because that's true of a lot of games that you only do get I, them on steam no but i don't i'm already invested in their platform like okay they're my yeah. lifestyle i have 10 years worth of games purchased there there's a lot of reasons why well I'm that's okay. that's the I challenge i have no problem with epic or any company doing a launcher i have a problem with the way they're going about getting it and you know there's something they, they said um over 40 percent of the people i was reading somewhere don't have steam at all according to their survey yeah it's all, it sounds it's like they're getting a lot people. of young markets who don't have Steam accounts to begin with because mm-hmm. they're just kids and they play Fortnite. So their plan is probably just to get the kid, you know, get the young generation onto Epic rather than Steam. And so when that generation grows up, they're using the Epic launcher. Well, I think it's twofold. Plan. I think they want they don't want just them; they want us. And for me, it is an enticement. I want to play that game on t- on on release day, and I want to play it wherever I get it. And I don't mind managing five stores. So basically, we're just two different kind of consumers. And I totally, totally, 100% with somebody who says, I don't want to do that. I'll wait next till next year. That is abs- that's where, that's the beauty of all this is we still get whatever choice that is. They're banking mm-hmm. on people doing what I'm going to do more than what you're going to do. And we'll see if they're right. I don't know. I'm not rooting or rooting for or against that. I would rather it just be everywhere like you. Like that's, uh, you know, in a utopic sort of scenario, I'd rather just everybody have the damn game and let's go. I mean, maybe, you know, Stadia is going to be the answer to all this. Maybe that's what they'd like us to think. There's your one platform for every game ever. Um, But that still won't be true because Nintendo will have their own thing. So I don't know. I feel like this has always been here. It's always going to be with us. Games have have planted this flag in the ground decades ago. And not every game has... um has launcher like i've been playing magic the gathering arena it's not on any stores you just download it straight from wizards i just think like, that okay right that now we're yeah. in a place where i mean i look at it and again i i think people have to make their decision i agree with you scott i don't think it's a false enticement i think it's a real enticement like i want to play that game when it comes out that sounds great to me and that's where i'll go and that's where i'll do it and i'll don't you already have a do. heck of a time i would rather play on steam if i had my preference if it came out on both i'd buy it on steam um but it doesn't kill me to have two stores i keep hearing like i don't want to manage i'm not managing anything i click an icon and it launches the store and it launches the game if i don't already have the store open to begin with um like that's not a difficult thing for me to manage if i go to the store i want to buy something in that's where i buy it i have opened epic store I don't know, barely at all recently. I've opened Steam nearly consistently. Like, I love Steam, but at the same time, like, what Bo's doing is fine. He's made a decision where he stands on it, where his principles lie, and that's his call and that's his decision to make, and I don't think it's anybody's job to say, like, no, that's the right call or the wrong call. That's just where he, that's where he lives. That's where he resides. But there's a lot of people that are out there belly aching super hard about this decision and it's like you know what if it means that much to you if it's that important that you play it when it comes out there is literally a free solution to that problem it's not like they're coming at you with a mallet saying sign up for our subscription service and also you need to buy the launcher and also you need to buy the game There's literally an option for you to get and play this game on the day it comes out for the cost of the game. So if your issue is purely, well, I want to play it when it comes out, there's a solution for you. If your issue is, I want to play it on Steam, there's a solution for you. You might not like it, but it exists. And that's the decision that Bo's making, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we... I I don't remember who said it, but someone said, why does Steam get to be our exclusive store? Who decided that? Well, nobody. They just were early, and they stuck with it, and they've been here a long time, so they became the default just because they were there. But they're like Kleenex. They're like Band-Aid. They're like any product where we just... I think that's taking a little bit for granted. I mean, their service is good. It is, but it's still built. We're talking like a 12-year-old, longer than that. How long have they been doing this? A long time. So so I think... I, I don't disagree with you. Like, they've earned it. They've absolutely earned it, and that's what I would rather... I would I, again like the other day a brand new uh, you know dungeon crawlers back in the eighties it would just be like a square at a time kind of like Grimlock yeah. the newer one I love those yeah. love them some one of my favorite subgenres and things from old days that they keep putting out now that I just love new versions of that I keep trying to get my hands on them there's a brand new one that came out glowing reviews from everybody saying this is the one they finally nailed both 
a modern sensibility and captured that old school feeling and they merged them and man are you gonna love this available exclusively on the epic store and i went shit but then i'm gonna get it anyway <laughs> you know what i mean like I, I i still want to play that game and i don't feel like it's in the same way that Bo's not seeing is that as an incentive, I'm like, well, that's my incentive. I just really want to play it. It'll probably show up somewhere else. That's fine. Remember, remember that, um, too, that part of this conversation is that Steam and services like Apple and all that, and Spotify, their enticement to stop pirating. Um, pirating being a rampant problem with digital products. And, and Steam, I think, is fundamentally designed to make it's easier to do this than to pirate and you're willing to pony up money to do it for the general masses who you know in a time and place long before it, there were online lockers for music we had napster we had all kinds of rampant piracy of digital content so to me the exclusivity thing harkens back to its backtracking from how we decided we were going to solve the problem of enticing people to stop pirating and to stop trying to cut corners and actually pony up money to pay at a place that's worth it. And so any company that's doing things along the lines that backtrack that value proposition to me is making a mistake and it, it, sh it shouldn't be rewarded. And I guess it will be, but I, I don't think it, I, I don't think that kind of, I understand what you're be. saying, but basically yeah. you're also saying that, I mean, in effect that would be saying, well, steam, you should be the monopoly then like here's the yeah. no here. i'm saying epic should compete in other ways they should have a store yeah but but uh, you know they're there you can go too far and you can upset consumers with bad practices what they're doing is they're effectively undercutting like if there is a monopoly someone cuts the profits down so low that nobody profits and they're hoping to hold out that the other businesses will fold or take some sort of damage and mm -hmm. get a foothold mm-hmm that's like literally they're taking their fort money and the Fortnite money and literally doing they're, they're strangling the, it's not just steam suffering it's every other launcher that does this kind of thing has, will have slow down in sales because it's so good to go over there and f maybe they're not even making that much money on the games that they're there they're just trying to get the installs mm. and and like i'm okay with that and i'm okay in the long run having the epic launcher i'm just saying there has to be a reason i want to go to your store yeah, and give it exclusivity to me is a false value proposition. Look, well, we have a game you want. It's not here. Like I want the game no matter where this it is. I uh, what what store it is. But saying come to Epic because we have the exclusive. I don't think that's the enticement. Not real value. It's I, not real value. I understand, but I don't think they're saying that's their. I don't think that's the enticement. The enticement isn't exclusivity. The enticement is if you want to play it in September, here's the only place you get it. Now maybe that's six of one, half a dozen of another. But I think there's a difference in, 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 at least in PR speak, when they talk about that. In other words, if I, if there's an enticement to say you and your friends will be playing this game this fall versus, or you can wait around and play it in a year. That's got to, that's an enticement for somebody. I mean, for a lot of people. Steam literally launched on the back of, if you want to play Half Life 2, look at this amazing shiny game. If you want to play it, you need to install Steam. And Bo, you said you don't remember people being upset about it, but that was the thing that everyone was upset about. What? You why do I have to sign up for this weird ass thing that I've never heard of before and play my game through it? What happened to the days of me putting a game in and installing it and just launching the game? This is this is dumb. I hate this. It didn't help that the Steam servers initially didn't really work that great. Yeah. But, you know, they launched on the back of, if you want to do this, you do this here. And yeah, we don't we're going, care we're going now. In circles, because, again, I said I'm okay with companies launching their own products on their own platforms. Yeah, but they basically Half made Half-Life it... 2, we're going to put it on Valve. I know it was controversial at the time, but... A lot of that stuff was when piracy was and file sharing was rampant mm -hmm. and kind of the norm on the internet. Like it took us some time for people, not just with video games, to wrap the head around that it, it was okay to spend money for virtual goods in a digital store. And Steam was part of coming up in that era and not the era we have now, which is everyone has a store. Yeah. There's 15 different places to get your music subscription, 15 different places to watch your online video, 15 different places to get your video games. Like I'm sick of it. 
Yeah, but like I choice, find that a choice is good. But I know choice they paralysis all want and all that. Subscription money and you know fifteen dollars here, fifteen dollars there adds up to a lot over time. We can't be sub to everything all the time. I only have so much attention for so many things, and it's frustrating. I would like it if people would compete on the quality of the storefront they have and not these practices of exclusivity. I, I just, I don't, I don't like it on, I hate it when I sub to Netflix and I'm like, shit, I should have subbed to Amazon prime this month with my money. Cause I wasn't savvy. Like I, I hate that as a consumer. I hate that. And it's a feeling. It's not facts we're talking about. We're talking about feelings mm -hmm. and everyone's entitled to their feelings. And my feeling is that it's too much mm. and I, 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 I don't like it. So I'm not, you know, I'm just not going to install things if I have too many different apps to have to manage for, for my attention. Totally I understand. I haven't watched a new season of Man of the High Castle because I'm subbing to Netflix right now. Right, I don't right. want to have 15 subs to 15 different TV services all right. the time. But then I guess I would, the only other thing I would say to, to, to any of this is I just can't imagine a, a pitch meeting where Epic executives are making this decision to launch a store and to invest their Fortnite billions into other ventures and that that somebody would just shoot that this has to be the idea they go with because there's no other way to to barge into the market you can't do it there's there would be yeah, epic would just not. flounder on the flounder on the fringes forever and just be the Fortnite place that oh did you know they had games too kind of place because that's i mean like how discord has a store but no one gives a shit basically yeah because I mean, they're buy, carrying the buy same from us we'll give you a sick yeah. wallpaper yeah because Maybe they have the same in our corporate culture we don't always have to grow in order to show value for the service like hey we're doing real well we have a, a, a launcher we have an engine we sell make great video games let's do a store let's do that what are we doing to grow for our stakeholders this year like it's it's arrogant and frustrating like you have good stuff just focus on the stuff you're good at like you don't not everyone needs to have the store, in my opinion. Stadia is irritating. Even I haven't even looked at it yet. And it just on principle, I'm like, I know the store. Yeah, but there's no, I mean, you could look back at other stuff. Like there's no Nintendo without barging in on Atari and Atari yeah. being caught unawares. And there's no Sega without Nintendo getting a little lax during the NES period. And then there's no Sony swinging in, <laughs> punching and, and, and changing the landscape again. Like, I, I feel like, I feel like I'm I am with you on on this stuff on a on a fundamental sort of gut level on a lot of these notions. I just but don't people have know to try to do this. Start businesses. It's yeah. like saying there's two restaurants in my town. They shouldn't put a third restaurant up because yeah. Or there's a Costco. Uh, you know, and or, it shouldn't be like it's the exclusive Mexican food place. Now I can't get Mexican food at my other places because they struck a deal to be exclusive Mexican, but they have yellow decor and I hate it. Mm. Like I get that. You're right. People have to. Uh, it's enshrined in our culture to compete and and to do things like this. So, like yeah. you said, it's a feeling, though. And and you know, I've been kind of going against Bo on a lot of this. But if I was going to say anything to kind of stand with him a little bit to kind of bring it full circle to just say, hey, if you're disagreeing with what Bo is saying, here's my thought. You know, it does kind of come back to a feeling sort of thing mm -hmm. it feels bad for Bo, and when i'm being honest like having a million launchers doesn't feel great to me either i don't like it but at the you same know, time i i also mm -hmm. i also acknowledge the fact that everybody has a right to make a store whether or not they should or not you know that's their call everybody can do it and the methods with which they do it you know this is kind of the way they had to. And the reason it feels like we're kind of talking in circles here is because I get what Bo's saying with, I hate the idea of exclusivity. But then on the other hand, you've got Scott and I saying, yeah, but what else do they do? Come to us and we'll give you some cool DLC. That's nice. That feels better. Does that really actually make the Epic Store something that we all say in a world where it launches on both? Well, we'll get it on Epic Store. No, they don't succeed in that realm. Yeah. So you kind of have to go the route they're going, but I also get what Bo's saying with, yeah, yeah but I that totally doesn't do. feel good. It's like this, okay? Scott's all-time best analogy incoming. Here you go. Okay, poo on a seat. What's a bunch of gorillas called? They're not a herd. What are they? They're just a... A, ga a gaggle. A gaggle of gorillas, okay? Is it a barrel of gorillas? And that's monkeys. That's monkeys. <laughs> uh, so you got a big, giant, uh, you know, Jane Goodall conservatory full of big old apes. 
And one of them started as a little tiny ape, you know, just like everyone else, got birth. But gorillas. as it moved on, it got bigger and bigger and bigger and became the dominant ape in there. And it is the monster ape. And nobody can take on this ape and get ownership of the place because he is in charge, large and in charge. So you, you, you could say, well, let's just introduce a couple of babies and see if they can make it. Or you put in a bulky younger one with a knife and a bazooka and say, all right, now, now let's see who takes over. And guess what? It's the only chance. There are going to be plenty of monkeys and apes who go, oh, but we like the current guy. He was kind of rough in the beginning, but he's been great since then. He does all the ape things that we need. He picks mites out of my hair and eats it. He's amazing. And then comes this little bazooka monkey who's got the only chance ever because he has a competitive change. And that is he can come in swinging with something bigger and he might be able to topple or at the very least compete with Big Monkey. That's all Epic's doing. Now, whether that's good uh, morally or uh, whatever other uh, you know, language you want to put on, I don't know. I can't, I can't say. But that's what they're doing. They're saying, we have an advantage. It's a ton of money is what we have. And we can give it to keep people here and create exclusives that drive people to our store. It's the only way in. Otherwise, the other gorilla just stays there. And you can't compete for 20 years trying to just be out there without doing anything. You're sort of, well, we exist over here and we have games. Come check us out and see if we compete. Not, but not with steam in the room. So I, I'm not yeah. saying you're wrong. Like we keep so, doing. So, I, I, again, I, I'm, I'm not mad that they have a store because I think we're getting a little confounded with it. I don't like timed exclusives. <laughs> pride. That, that, that's my issue is I don't like the timed exclusive. Did they say pride? Hold on. Like, I, I, like I can I can crap on having stores, but at the end of the day, have your stores. <laughs> I don't like to, my main problem is the timed exclusive. So everything you said makes sense to me. We need competition. If it's just Steam, then you know we don't. I don't want a monopoly from Steam either. I do want competitors. And getting frustrated about having so many stores is is part of the argument. Is that I want Epic to make me want to get their store and, and launch it, but they haven't. I don't think timed exclusive does the reverse. What if it was permanent exclusives the way that Anthem got you to sure. go to a subscription on Origin? Would that change sure. it? Yeah, sure. Because that's timed again. Exclusives and permanent exclusives are a very different situation. Because again, I don't agree with it as much, but I do want to play Borderlands. Right. But it is their, that's EA store, which is part of your point. They have their own stuff on their own store. Like they're just making me wait six months for no reason. At least if they said it's only like Blizzard games I can't play anywhere else, so I have the Battle.net launcher. Yeah, yeah. So I love playing their games, and they're a great studio. I wish I didn't have to have. I guess I'm looking right now. I see good old games in my system tray and Steam and Battle. I wish that wasn't the case, but Blizzard games are worth it enough for me to do that. Let's see what I've got. And right there's now. a good reason. The mm. good reason is that Scott and I they take a lump sum of money to do the exclusive. Then Scott and I pay them, and then you still pay them six months later. <laughs> and even well. more, it's a gamble because if the Epic Store folds, Scott and I are going to buy the game again because we're a bunch of idiots. Right. Epic Store, it won't fold. but It won't, but you see my point. Like It's a win-win for the company. You can understand why they no. make that gamble with a timed exclusive. Because yeah. by the time it hits Steam... I'll have already waited six months, so I won't need to get it the day and date it launches on Steam, and then I'll wait for a Steam mega sale and buy the whole thing for 20 bucks. <laughs> well, then, yeah, but now we're down a whole different road, which I don't yeah. disagree with either because it depends on your kind of you know devotion to a, a title or whatever. But I'm looking at the list here. I have GOG, Steam, uh, Apple, or uh, sorry, <laughs> Apple, uh, Blizzard Launcher, Apple. Battle.net, uh, let's see, Epic, and Uplay. Oh, and Origin. So how many is that? Five? I've Nope, six total launchers is what I have right now. It's a lot. It's not hundreds, but it's a lot. I think I yeah. have three. I don't think it can bear much more than that. I mean, I'm not using the, I'm not really using the um, Origins one at all anymore because I quit subbing. But the, I mean, I'll get in and play Apex here and there. But um, the other three, I use Uplay way more than I thought I would because that's where I have some of these. Well, I got those as codes. So it's not fair. It's not. It doesn't count. Yeah, I wouldn't have bought them. You made your feelings known about how you like you play, and I thought they were really good. I remember. It's okay. Oh. It's it's a good. Yeah. It's a. I'll tell you this. I think it's a better put together store than Epic's is so far. There's more. And you there. have you play installed on it, and they don't do exclusive. Their games are on Steam. Yeah. Well, Division Two was a timed exclusive on Epic Store. Okay, but they don't do it 100. percent Do you have the Bethesda launcher? You play ESO. Do you do that with through Bethesda? Uh, no, I do that through Steam. However, um. That's an interesting cool. thing that happened this week because Bethesda was famous last year for saying, 
so uh fallout 76 is not going to be on steam but we're going to have it on our launcher which probably hurt them their launcher is kind of poopski and nobody uses it and i don't think they sold near as many pc copies of that game as they perhaps planned to or wanted to um so now rage 2 doom eternal what's the other one there's a third one. Oh, the wolfenstein uh twins thing yeah uh, stein whatever stain Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. Stein. The Wolfenstein Bears. Yes, those are Everybody the ones. Everybody mispronounces it. Youngblood. Yeah. Youngblood. Yeah. Young Mandela Blood. Effect Part 2. Uh, those three games are now Steam, day and date. So I think mm-hmm. they went, Ugh, that didn't go well. We're going to put them back over to Steam. But it's the same motivations. Where are you going to get the most sales and the biggest bang for your buck? Some of these people so, are seeing well, the Epic and, deal and a place to do And that's the thing. And this relates to the Jason Schreer article, game companies half-assing it. Yeah, we want to have a store. Oh, we didn't make as much sales. Let's go. Like, you're going to be a game store? Be a game store. Go all in with your game store crap. Don't do these this crap. At least I can respect Origin for going pretty hard on the Origin content. Mm-hmm. But, and the neat thing they've done with the subservice, but half-assing it to just try and milk customers, but not truly compete to be a prop not getting in the game to be like we are going to be the best storefront and we're all in corporate speak they get up in front of the people and say yeah we got updates planned for anthem and our store and they they say all the right things but when it comes to follow through they're not trying to be the coke or the pepsi of storefronts and i want that from companies oh you mean That's- epic's not is that what you're saying? Epic, I don't. I think we're paying for an experiment from Epic, and 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 like I said, I, I just don't want to be used in that. Well, you're not so, wrong that the site as it is, or the store as it is right now, just feels like a website, and that's kind of what it is. Like it's really it not. It looks like it's a clean looking nothing. It's like, a website. Like, Why do I yeah. want this? Like I went to the website, and I'm just like, yeah. Oh. They need to. I mean, I. So here's where I will 100 percent agree and totally criticize them if they don't do it. They claim they're doing this. But they have to fill that thing out feet with features, and they've and recently talked about. All right, we're bringing in, um, I forgot if it was reviews or, oh oh, a, a tagging system, category system, um, discussion system, like they're gonna have to do that. Like Steam had the had the, the l- not luck. They had the luxury of over time adding all that poop, to the to the machine that it is today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Epic can probably do that faster, just like they're acquiring everything else faster so they probably can get there quicker but they do need to do it no question the funny thing is is i don't want them to oh interesting steam's community tools you know what i want a store to do Mm. show me my games let me buy additional games and launch the games that i have that's what i want a launcher to do I don't want to talk to other people about it. That's I don't want to lie. see what other people. How much do you love Battle.net voice chat? Come on, you want. I do. I do like. I do like the that's voice a, chat. That's not true. And I like how easy it is to join friends in Steam. So I'll give you those. And yeah. you don't but pay for that. With when it's like, free. hey, here's our community tab. I don't care. I don't want to see the community. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's a I'm little feature interested. bloat. I don't use all the features either. Yeah, not everything's going to be there, and it gives bloat on Steam for sure. But sure. but chat works in Steam. There's there there's streaming in Steam in Steam. There's a lot of ideas they're putting forward to give themselves the number one edge. It's like the difference between YouTube and Twitch. Twitch not trying to be YouTube. YouTube's trying to be Twitch and failing at it because they're not going hard enough to figure out what makes gamers want to go onto Twitch and enjoy Twitch. You know how they'd probably do it? Pay. They're not. No, they, this is what they do. They would pay Ninja. Pay exclusive stre- streamers yeah. to just stream on YouTube. They would pay. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, they would pay Ninja. Sorry, they is would, that happening? No. it's well, YouTube yeah. gaming is being shuttered, basically. Would that work? Wouldn't, but, wouldn't if I was Ninja be worried people stop watching me because they don't want to do it on YouTube? If like, they pay you enough money, it doesn't matter is the point, and it would only be a timed a ta- exclusive. As a tastemaker, your reputation is kind of important. I would see that as a bad move. I mean, I would too. I'm, I'm not saying they do it, and maybe that's part of the reason that YouTube gaming slowed and nobody cares now because they maybe tried that and it didn't work. I don't know. But what I'm saying is for them to do that, they'd have to do something at that level, and they weren't willing to do it. They were hoping their it would application just... has to be, their service has to be good. They have to have they have to have the goods to back it up. You can make all these exclusive like if they paid all these players to pay Apex and it was trash, no one would be playing Apex. They backed it up with the goods and a good plan for market. Right. You can't just do the marketing and then not back it up with the actual goods. But here's the my perception here's... of Epic is 
it's not really backed up by any goods. It's a working storefront. Well, here, here's for, some here's some empirical um, data that may not mean anything, but I heard from somebody who works at Ubisoft who said they sold more. Um, uh, sorry, what is what was the game? Oh, Divi they sold more Division Two pre-orders on the Epic Store than they ever did on the Steam Store. And I can't remember if it was any other game or if it was Division 1 or what the deal was. But they sold, like their sales were hotter over on Epic. Now, I don't know if that's just because... They have a lot of users, uh, for sure. I mean, I, it may just be that numbers game, right? It's 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 a huge lot of people over there with eyeballs on it who are trying new things and not just Fortnite. It's an, it's an appealing storefront, too, because you can look at Steam and say, well, if I launch a game, there's 5 million games getting launched on that server. Like, uh, what is it, Virtual Cam Girls? is being launched right beside my big triple a game like epic store doesn't have many games so they're gonna put me on a big splash yeah and i'm gonna get the eyeballs that's or true in steam i'm just i'm on a little little graphic in the front maybe if i don't pay them a bunch of money. plus they're i mean they're paying obviously to do this but they're giving you a free free game every month over on epic and they're good games like it's not trash they'll be like they definitely want people there's enticement yeah. a free game is good enticement mm -hmm. If a free if Borderlands three launches and it's free, I'm gonna install the. <laughs> oh, now we found it. We yeah, found it's it. Free it just needs to I, be free. I just don't like timed exclusives, but that's sufficient enticement. Sure, give me a free game. All right. Yeah. See, it is all just a matter of of, of granular it's enticement. Yeah. Timed exclusives should not be applauded. As good move, Epic. Awesome. Good job. You made a timed exclusive on a platform that doesn't need timed exclusives. Some of this stuff that's, I'm gonna that drills down to like where all the other si the symptoms come from that illness. It's an illness, and and I'm not the like the Borderlands games are getting review bombed right now. And you can say what you will. I don't like the practice. I don't do review bombs, but I understand it. Well, I'm not mad at it. Epic's talking about not doing reviews for this very reason. That's one of my that's one of people's least favorite things about Twitch or about Steam. Not that there are reviews because I find it helpful when they're not being bombed. It's that they yeah, can sure. so That's easily. Not what they're there for. It's that they can be so easily bombed that people. Yeah, I hate that. I don't. I don't have it. any time they're... for Steam reviews. I don't care what Steam users have to say about a it's, video game. It's yeah. not what it's there for, but you should ignore feedback, whether it's positive or negative. You shouldn't, and if you, you have shouldn't a bunch ignore of consumers it, but... up in arms, and it, maybe it's a small percentage who militaristically like go to these places and do it, and and if that's the case, maybe this isn't good information. But but the fact that. The fact that people have that opinion, you can't just dismiss out of hand. Like, no, oh, but if they don't review bombing, if they don't have the opinion, there's a billion and other places. There's a billion other forums for they, them to go do that. I think giving them a room in your house to come shit all over your couch is never a good idea, because they're just going to shit on your couch. If you want to review bomb Captain Marvel because you think there's too many female superhero movies and it's just an SJW thing, I have no use for any of your opinions. You are welcome to go have them. I don't want to hear. Yeah, and they're places for you to go have them. But don't put them in a place where you're supposed to give me an aggregate I can count on as a consumer whether I want to see a thing they, or not. They want to be heard. Like when you protest, Scott, you yeah. don't protest uh, on the coast and the beach where no one's going to see you. You go to the White House and you protest. Yeah, but you don't, that's, you don't that's, get to walk. The, it's important to understand that's the human impulse of behind review bombing. That yeah. We can't dismiss out of hand the need to congregate oh, I don't, and express I don't disagree. as a group. I don't disagree. It's not the right place for it, but the, the, the meaning behind the protest is legitimate. I completely agree. They are bad actors sometimes, though. Sometimes they're going in there sure. with but straight there's bad up actors garbage. In protests that cause totally riots agree. and looting and stuff. So, totally agree. So again, I'm saying review bombing is not a good practice. I don't review them, but the impulse and the fact that there's a message in the community shouldn't be dismissed out of hand. Yeah, and I, so if you say, "Well, there's looters in those uh, First Nations protesters," uh, I wish they'd stop squabbling and dismiss it all out of hand because there's bad actors, as you said. But there may be a legitimate concern that needs to be addressed. I I, protests, I agree, so. and if I'm going to the White House to uh, to and I have a grievance, I expect to go out there, be able to hold a sign, yell my things, and be out there and show my protest. They're not mm -hmm. going to let me, however, do my. What if I said, "Well, the only way I can protest truly." is if you let me into the White House, I would like to pin Donald Trump down and I'd like to pee directly in his left eye. That's no, my no, no. form that's of protest. That's the hyperbole of gamers and we're not... It's, the, yeah, but, that's my point. Is, but that's my point. The analogy is you can protest at the White House, you can't protest inside a Walmart. Which <laughs> these are storefronts. And it's like, let's say there were papers on all the products in Walmart and you could write, screw you Walmart for not selling uh, no-name macaroni. 
and a whole bunch of people were just in there review bombing your macaroni in person you'd be like call the cops this is private property this is not a place for protest right and, and that's what review bombing is it's like i go into your store and i take the shit yeah and you're, you're the, the problem is they don't have the clear separation or the enforcement so what you end up with is a review bomb but and, but uh, protesters are protests and mobs are not logical they go where they're going to be seen and heard so yeah. if you give them a place to be seen and heard they're going to collect and go there so it's the human impulse to do these things you can't be mad about because it's the, our democratic nations are based on ha people having a voice and enough of them get together they will say something so like I said, it's not a good idea. I, I don't blame stores for not wanting to put comment cards in the Walmart aisles. Bad idea for sure. But they need feedback from somewhere and mm -hmm. the people need to congregate somewhere where they can be seen and heard. Yeah. And there's no White House for gaming. Here's the simple so, way to do it. You have a link that do, or you have certified reviewers, whether those be industry reviewers or people who have uh, are verified, right? You have a process of being verified. That's, a, that's something people do all over the place. Twitter does it. Everybody does it. You can totally do that. You become a verified reviewer, and those are what show up initially. Then you have a link that says to everything else, and you click it and you go there. I think that's fine. Yeah. It's, it's totally not the fine. appropriate place for that, but protesters don't pick the appropriate place all the time. It's they like go, comments go on YouTube. They need to be heard. Yeah, and a there's no more uh, a, a victimized group that's disproportionate to their actual victimization than gamers. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know we can we can i can acknowledge that that like things are the hyperbole in the community is insane yeah. but well aaron in the feelings, chat says feelings are feelings and aaron says rotten tomatoes for video games that already exists it's called metacritic and it's exactly that so you can go look that's review bombed all the time <laughs> review bombed yeah. constantly constantly and co-opted into something that it shouldn't be where companies are paying incentives based on scores and it sucks it, so, so it you got know, very big and very ugly. Yeah. Very you know what that means? It means the internet does not have a good place where you can go and complain, but also be heard. So you can go to Reddit, but it's just an echo chamber. Mm -hmm. the protest, the reason you protest in public places where it's inconvenient, you halt up traffic, you, you make the news, is to cause tr enough trouble that your word gets out there without doing harm. And the internet, there's an impulse to do that on the internet, but there isn't a place to do it on the internet because you're like, write to your congressman or write to the New York Times. And it's like, no one's just going to delete your emails. Yeah. You have to go where it's inconvenient. So any place on the internet that offers that yeah. is it's going a, to have a, that. It's an echo chamber and everywhere you go. No, I agree. Can't get away from it. It's a know, par so. That is a paradox. It's freaking weird. Um, but I always go back to the whole, you can't yell fire in a movie theater. That's not legal protest. Well, why? Well, because you're putting absolutely people, not, absolutely not, because you're no, putting people at risk. To protest, so sure. I, I would, I would like Steam to be more of a movie theater and just say, if you they should have a protest outside. button on Steam. I mean, that's the next big innovation is to get rid of review bombs. Is to put community rather than say well, under community, put it in community activism, yeah. and an awareness button, and yep. then, and then that could just be. It's not Reddit where anything goes. It's just where consumer mobs can. Get together and express for people to read and i'm sure kotaku will write articles about it yeah <laughs> yeah well it does it exist they'll write an article they'll write an article that's absolutely true well i feel pretty good about that let's talk also I just go work for steam now i just have a big idea the, for steam the it's first true, man. the Gold first uh i wanted to at least get it out here that first joker trailer happened and it was pretty rad and i like it and i want to see it so i hope it yeah. lives up to it it looks me neat. too yeah he looks crazy that's what i need uh, the fact that it's set in the seventies is great. Um, just everything about that. He's all skinny and weird looking. That music is great. Like, look, I've seen plenty of DC trailers that were better than the movies themselves when they finally came out. I'm looking at you suicide squad and any of the freaking Superman, Batman crap lately, but <laughs> this looks pretty rad. So yeah. I want to see uh, it. the big thing. I watched the dark Knight recently and man, Heath Ledger was amazing. He's really that. good. Yeah. And so, Making a Joker movie is such a tenuous proposition, and I really liked what I saw. I think Phoenix can be creepy. Yeah. And yeah. I was I like surprised that. at how many people kind of fired back when I was like, oh, it looks good. And I, it was apparently a very controversial opinion to have. Got I think it, it, didn't of... look like a, it didn't look like a superhero trailer. It kind of looked like a Quentin Tarantino movie trailer, which I'm totally good with if it's just like, if it's just strange and weird and less. Less about him in makeup doing villain things and more just about a twisted person. 
sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, it looks really good. It looks pretty good. So we'll see what it is. I heard a funny thing on Twitter today. Someone said in 1989, we threw the Joker into a vat of boiling acid. In 2019, we're throwing the Joker into society. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's true it's, it's like it looks like society messes them up not the yeah super goo but in a, in a fun way maybe all right let's do this uh games we're playing this week i am completely 100 percent trapped in elder scrolls online right now i don't know what my deal is i can't stop playing it i love it um i think that game has come really far part of it was the hype around a new expansion coming and they have some sort of pre-quest content that's already in the game for people. They had a free weekend for a lot of people. Um, the game went on sale. The base game went on sale for 10 bucks. I noticed there were queues for the first time that I'd ever seen in that game. Didn't last very long, but that was interesting. Um, Did you get just, into Blades? Uh, no, yes, and I hate and I hate it. It's very bad. Okay. Um, it's, <laughs> it's what... I hate to say this, because to... <laughs> John... I mean, I, get, I probably should just give John some credit here. Hmm. He had said... He didn't have a lot of hope for Blades because of the same reasons that mobile games screw people over. And I kind of thought what you meant was, well, it won't control great or it won't look as good on a small screen. You know, whatever the reasons are. No, it's that they spent time to put in all this extra phone shit, like timed loot boxes and stuff that... Uh, just that stuff again. Even though it's a premium game, they've got all that stuff jammed in there and it just irritates me. So I can live with some... Oh, did we lose Bo? Eh, he just was so mad about Blades not being great. He just decided to leave. Yeah, he's just out of there. Um, he's just mad. He's well, just done with it. You know, you can hardly blame the poor guy. Um, there he oh, is. Oh, there he is. Okay, well, what happened here? Something press, just went... the, press the mute button, and it killed Discord again. Weird. Yeah. Your mute button does more than it's supposed to, I've learned. Something's weird there. I don't know what's going on. But uh, anyway, uh, excuse the me. The Blades <laughs> is terrible. I wouldn't say it's terrible. I think somebody with... The patience for that stuff maybe enjoy themselves, but as a guy who I can get into a good mobile game, this just irritated me, and I'm not happy. And also just the lead up and the whole oh you've ordered the game and now you have it, but guess what you got to wait longer to ensure a better experience or that all stuff we talked about last week that finally went away. But I have real bad taste in my mouth on that. On the other hand, ESO killing it. That game is great. It is my Elder Scrolls right. game of choice right now. And by the way. Here's the weird bit. I'll play it. Uh, I did this when I first got back in. I played a bunch and then said, let me just fire up Skyrim and remind myself. Skyrim is a little old and busted, folks. It just is. It's an old game. It's got problems. It's buggy as hell. It always has been. I've patched it to, to hell and back, and I use mods. I understand all that stuff's cool. But I am telling you, other than you being able to cheat through the game, this is... I think this is the Elder Scrolls game right now. At least it is for me. And I really like it. They have polished this thing really well. The quests are great. I can go anywhere, anytime. If I'm a part of the world, I'm like, I don't know about this place. I can go anywhere else I want and start a whole other continent and do all new quests and go to all new places and get in raids and dungeons and different PvP content if I want. Or just play it like a single-player-ass Elder Scrolls game, which is great. Everyone's voiced. Everyone talks to you. Liam O'Brien is all over that game. I kill him a lot. Um, but there's uh there's just, everything is so professionally done that I, I, I really do feel like as much as wow was my king of all MMOs, this thing is getting right up there, man. Like right there. I really dig it. And it's also just kind of that hard fantasy vibe, which I miss a lot and is definitely not in wow. Um, yeah, I really is dig there, it. Is there group group content in there, like raids? Oh yeah, ton, like all that? that stuff's in there. Sure, I haven't done much of it because I'm still mm. leveling tunes, but um, it's not. But there is all the end game that you would expect. Um, I you know as to its quality or whatever. I guess I I haven't looked that deep. But is it a subscription fee game? No, no? it's a you buy it and play it. It's like Guild or Guild Wars Two did this does the same model. So you buy so the, the game. What's really weird mm. is Elder Scrolls. Is twelve forty nine right now on Steam? Yeah, um, but the expansion's eighty dollars Canadian. Oh, I don't know why that would be. It's only thirty nine here. Elsewhere is the new one, right? So it's like I could get into the base game for super cheap. And oh yeah, sub fee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I do. I'm very tempted, and probably will just do this. I'm probably going to do their plus membership because when you do that, you get a bunch of free currency for other stuff, but you also get the DLC packs they have in the game. Uh, without having to buy them at all or do anything special to get them. Oh. They're just part of it. So they have these special DLCs, right? Like 
There's the Clockwork City, which I'm in right now, which is amazing. Um, it's a piece of DLC that you can play and get a bunch of story in and do a bunch of cool stuff in that's normally like, I don't know, two bucks or whatever it is. Oh, yeah. I think the thing I'm looking at is all the expansions are rolled into one. That's why it's so Oh, cool. that's probably why. Yeah, yeah. But it's like it's like Warcraft. You can do it like Warcraft, but without the sub. The sub does give you some benefits, but it's not gameplay benefits. You don't. You don't. Uh, well, I like that approach because yeah. I think I tried it once, but mm-hmm. it was a, quite a while ago. Yeah, if you tried yeah. it early, it was rough. I, I, I enjoyed it. it. It's just having time to play it. MMOs are pretty time consuming. Well, that's the fun thing is I'm not looking at it as an MMO, even though I guess it doesn't change how time consuming it is. But uh, I'm playing it like an Elder Scrolls Witcher, game. I'm just playing I like the Elder I'm... Scrolls or Witcher for that matter. I'm playing it like that. And all right, so here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm purchasing it live on the show. Oh, that's sweet. That's what John used to make me do all the time. I like this. Yeah. I, I like when we buy things live on the show. Well, I like playing games together. And honestly, like the number of weeks that have gone by, we're just like, oh, I don't know, guys, have been playing you. So, like, you really like it. I love it. I'd play with you for sure. Together, so. Yeah, I talked Dunaway into getting oh. it too the other day. Oh, perfect. Um, I mean, it's so, that's what I mean. It's, it's so inexpensive now just to get the base game to try. Like, I'll spend $10 to try a game. Oh, yeah. I have it, but I got a question. Do you always start in Morrowind? No, you go anywhere you want. Because, okay, because every time I make a new character, it just puts me in Morrowind. I don't know why. Well, I don't that's, know if that's just because I have Morrowind. Yes, that's the newest expansion you have. And so it puts you there as your starting zone. But there's no, when they did the one Tamriel update where they made the entire world scale with you. Yeah. Um, which to me was the biggest most important change to the game and brought me back um that you can go anywhere so you may start you in morrowind if that's your most recent expansion but you can immediately click on one of the shrines they have these shrines instead of flight points basically they're like quick travel points you can just click on a shrine and go anywhere to start any other continent any other part of the world that you've uh, you know have expansions up to and there's tons of it tons of content like outrageous amounts of content i mean it's like a 75 80 gig game or some huge thing like that it's i mean i like morrowind it's just every time i start there and i've got you know i'm there in that city and i'm just like well what if i don't want to go talk to lord vivic i'm also what if i want to go do something else <laughs> i'm also a little surprised that you didn't glom immediately onto the like um the rogue style characters you can build in that game because they oh, are yeah i Look, I default in all... It doesn't matter what I say I'm going to do in an Elder Scrolls game. I end up in the same spot. Sneaky Archer. Yeah. Almost 100% of the time, I can't help it. I always become a sneaky archer that when something doesn't die from my sneaky archer arrows, I then stab. Yeah. That's 100%. No matter what I do, I'm like, I'm going to use a mace and armor, and this is what I'm going to do. Two hours later, sneaky archer. Yeah. That's all I am. I have some in those games. I have some pretty cool builds with a couple of characters right now, but let's it just gives you lots of options. Um and it's much more action oriented that combat. Um and is better combat than Skyrim. You know, like they've improved it, but you can still play it like Skyrim. You can even be first person in this thing. But here's here's the thing, Bo. This is the other nice thing. I haven't done it yet, but my understanding is if you got the game and if John had the game, we could all group up. And John could be a level 10. I could be my level 29 or 30, whatever I am. Bo mm-hmm. could be level 1. And it I will scale. That, Bo, at level pass it, will, already. it will scale for all of us. So we can go run that content, whatever it is. It's questing, whatever. And the world will adhere. Will, will basically treat us as equals, if that makes sense. So like, um, like Guild Wars 2, basically. Yes, just like that. And if something drops like a sword for you, Bo... It isn't going to be a level 30 sword because I'm playing. It will be a level one or two that you need. Um, and my and if it dropped for me, it would be level 30. Like we're they, they some people don't like this. They like that. They like a world with lots of disparity. They like to walk into a zone and go, oh, no, I'm going to die immediately as soon as something breathes on me. I don't care about any of that. I just want to play. Like, let me different play. kinds of fun. I can appreciate both. I, I mean, can I really too. I can too. World of Warcraft. And right. Gear is like the easiest nonsense thing, and I'm okay with it. It's, it's, it's something about this game in particular. I don't think I'd even want WoW to do it exactly. It's it's something about this game's other systems that are better served by a by a flattened world like that. I mean, I just uh, I have fond memories of playing Oblivion and Skyrim. Didn't really play the ones before it. Yeah, they're very good games. Yeah. And if you're you know if the experience is good enough that you know 
that you're spending time in it. I want to. I definitely want to check it out. I, I did play through the beginning. Actually, it's funny you mentioned it because I think one of the guys was definitely Liam O'Brien was talking to. No, oh, probably. Um, yeah, he's all over that. Uh, and 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 I remember just enjoying it. And I got, I guess, to the main city that you started in after the opening quest. Mm-hmm. And I liked the time. It was just a time question. That's uh, and I wasn't really playing it, so I uninstalled it. But that's the other thing, though. The story that continues throughout all of it is really good. Um, I think the cinematics are cool. Like it's just a. And they're apparently making big money. Like, they're doing well with their model. And that makes me happy because nobody wants to be playing a dead game. And it's not. It's definitely not. It's up there in the top, you know, two or three. It's not easy being in an MMO in a World of Warcraft world. I mean, just even in the industry now. But if your MMOs are declining, WoW is still the big big elephant in the room. And this is one of those. We talked about earlier games that launch broken. This game launched kind of broken. But they've... That's They've all. continued to support it and yeah. make that game like it could be game of the year for this year, not on its launch yeah. year. Like that, I mean, if Blizzard has proven out anything over the course of a lot of its games and its entire company history, is that games get better with time. Yeah, unless you, you stick around and play them, and and um, it doesn't need to be about the hype. It just needs to be about the game being fun and the community and and all those aspects. So yeah, I'm, I'm impressed uh, with it. We'll play it. Well, yeah. If you're getting it, let's play it. My voice is leaving. Sorry, Chad. I don't know what's happening to my voice. All right. Well, I know we, me, John, and I can talk about the games we've been playing. Yeah. What have you guys been doing there, John? Uh, so I don't have a lot to say about it just yet, but I did get the expansion pack to Civilization VI, the one that adds environmental effects. And it's so far, it has been pretty good. I'm very early in my first game uh, in this expansion, so I haven't really bumped up against much of it, except. You know, the game does, and I think this will make you feel better, Scott, because I know one of the things you said that gave you anxiety about it is you didn't like disasters and things like SimCity and yeah, stuff like that. Generally speaking, it, yeah. This game makes it very clear where the weather effects will hit. When you look at the, like, I'm going to settle somewhere map, you know, when you click your settler and you're picking where you're going to, you know, build your new city, it will show you if the water rises, these tiles will go away. Or if there's a flood, these tiles are in danger. Or if there's a volcano, it will affect these tiles. So you know what to do, but it uses a risk-reward system to say, like, okay, well, if you build here, you're next to a volcano. It could destroy improvements that you build on this space, but once that wears off, the land will become extremely fertile and you'll get bonus resources from it. So it, it kind of outlines exactly what to expect from it. It's not as unpredictable as disasters in some of those sim games. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that might excite you or might turn you off depending on what you're looking for in it. But uh, so far it seems very solid and uh, I've enjoyed it quite a bit, but haven't brushed up too much against the new features just yet. So That's, I might talk about it more in the future. Yeah, it also seems uh, well received. People like the Civic the civic, civic expansion, highly rated, nicely uh, oh, yeah. nicely reviewed. Uh, Bo, how's Magic the Gathering Arena? Because apparently you're all uh, into it right now. Yeah, so on the less complaining side and the more full complimentary mode, Arena is amazing. Mm. It's in a good state. I played it. I was early on, invited to early beta, and I was like so-so on it. But it is basically, I would say, Hearthstone's the better, the best of all the TCGs, including Hearthstone. Hearthstone's still the better video game, if that makes sense. I, I get it, but sure. I'll, but a lot of the stuff that Hearthstone is missing, like tournament modes and and just all the robust ways that you can play a trading card game, it's present in the arena. So they made a good-looking game. Not as good-looking as Hearthstone, obviously. Not as much attention to detail, but plays fast, plays intuitive, difficult as hell. So if you don't like playing Hearthstone, find it hard. You won't enjoy Magic Arena. But the client is beautiful. It's fun to navigate. The new player experience is really fun, the way they have quests in there. It's a great. I'm super into magic again because mm. of Arena, and it's not like playing their online version, which is a turd, but necessary by necessity. This is, it's good, and it's still in beta, and there's six card sets in it already. Like they're supporting the crap out of this thing. I had no bugs playing it, and I've been playing. I think I've, I think I played like on Sunday. I just wanted to play a few games, and I end up getting sucked in the whole day. Wow, just drafted. Um, They've uh, had a lot of the quality of life stuff from Hearthstone. Like, you don't have doubles or have to sell it. So once you get a card that you already have a copy of, you get a wild card and you can just buy a different card with it. It's actually kind of better than Dust. Um, 
and and all the different competitive modes, which is what's great, which is what Hearthstone is missing, is present here. Like everything they've done, they've made sure there's a lot of different activities, and they're not like worried about only. It's only, still only two freaking game modes, or maybe four, but two competitive game modes, uh, really in the game. So, I'm I'm super sold. Also, the artwork. So Magic's always had great artwork, but yeah. for some reason, the sets they have right now, the artwork is crazy good and because the aesthetic is so different than you know hearthstone is very comical mm -hmm. and very silly to see the very serious images blowing up on the screen and stuff like that it's just really really cool yeah and um i'm loving it arena is a windmill success for a game for wizard especially by wizard standards like mm -hmm. they're yeah their they're previous attempts have been games. pretty bad. They've been pretty bad in the past, but this sounds if they awesome. outsource their games to other companies and they're like, you know, they can be good, but like when Wizards makes their own apps and stuff, it's usually jank city. Mm. And this is oh my god, it's so good. I'm so, so I'm so excited to hear that just because I don't know. They're probably sick of Hearthstone eating their lunch. It's time for the the granddaddy to step in and go, yo, remember me? <laughs> you know, it's... and make a big splash. And I hear a lot of Hearthstone uh streamers and pros are like so enamored that some of them are like teetering toward going full it time. has the fun you know when you say video gamey because like ha not having too many dull moments where you're not pressing the mouse and mm -hmm. interacting mm -hmm. that's what magic online is and hearthstone is like let's have fun yeah like let's make everything fun to do fun to attack they want you so to they, break they, pots and poke at the tree yeah. and tentacle comes out and all that so, stuff. so they don't have as like it's not as detailed as that hearthstone still wins in that front but they've made it fun to play all the cards and to play the game and the games are quick yeah can be quick it's still a deep tactical strategy game i think i spent 40 minutes on one match that was an intense mind buster um but it it's really well it's a it's a victory for tcg so if you like playing hearthstone you should be playing magic it's really really good and it's just the card art i can't get over how beautiful in this new expansion ravnica um the rakdos guild and it's funny because it's D&D &D related too because it's a D&D &D Ravnica book, I think, mm. um, that just got released. Uh, they're just like jesters. And they're just so beautifully painted. And there's like a theater of horrors and this giant monster. It's just like, oh my God, they're really firing on all cylinders right now. That's awesome to hear. I love the art in those on those cards yeah. is it old art from cards or is it it's all no, new it's stuff new car they do new art for all the new sets it's hmm. it's all brand new like i'm just saying i've played a lot of magic and the art's always been good but sometimes some of the art is it's different artists so you got like some painted thing that looks amazing and you got something kind of a little whimsical and off yeah off. And these are still the same the same thing like lots of artists but they're definitely more hard fantasy <clears throat> there's... it just feels like the quality of the art has been really stepped up so it's just a pleasure to play with the cards and to, to have them I, I, and the new player experience is always giving you a ding you get a bunch of free cards and a free decks way more than you ever get in hearthstone it's it's really really good i recommend it even just to do play versus the ai and do the new player experience stuff it's it's fun yeah uh chat room yeah, says so. it's digital art now not the same as hand-drawn old cards no there's you still hand draw these by the way oh there's still there's still paint there's paint like i get what he means there's a certain quality to the humanoid especially the vampires yeah in the ravnica like probably they're using modern techniques to enhance it and make things look more consistent but there are still there is one that clearly painted art of an angel that is just like like you know when they say you died and you went to heaven and you saw a beautiful angel and you yeah. wept because it was so like the art's that good on some of these cars and i'm just like oh my god yeah no they don't beautiful beautiful painting digital art is no different than it's just a different canvas guys i just i i'm i'm, I'm hearing stuff in the chat where actually half of what i do for a living is this and you can't just hand somebody a tablet and a digital pen and say, go for it. You still have to know I how mean, to draw. There was a time when someone was like, you paint with a paintbrush? I use my dong. That's how we did it in caveman days. Yeah, my Screw dong on a cave wall. Technology is technology. It doesn't, it's not any worse or bad. It's just different tools. Different guys. tools, different time, all that. Check yeah. this out real quick. Oh, listen to this. Just a little bit of ESO music. Before you know it, you're going to be hearing, nah, 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 nah. everyone thinks that's just Skyrim music. No. It goes all the way back to all the Elder Scrolls games. It's like Mario music. It was there at the beginning, and it's still here today. And in this game, you get to hear it all. And it's super rad. Oh, do those notes bring back memories of like playing older games? Oh, yeah, them? for like sure. Like how Heroes does that a lot, yeah. where you hear like, uh, the mm -hmm. Baron's music, and you're like, oh. Oh, for sure. Like I'll, I'll spend 
just uh, so there are times I'll I'll hit a, a zone or something, and it and I like to play. I think my wizard's a Nord, so it's very Skyrimish. But there's a zone where the music really gets heavy male backing vocals and kind of hua hua kind of stuff and that kind of Skyrim vibe and it just gets me going, man. It's just so good. Oh, I really love the Skyrim trailer. Yeah, that music's great. That's so good. Yeah, that's the song. I mean, my no, 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 my no, first no. Elder Scrolls was uh, Morrowind, so whenever I hear that theme, I'm like, it's the Morrowind. Yeah, theme. you you hear Not that myself, and think Morrowind. But... Other people hear it and go, oh, that's Oblivion. It's like, no, it's just arrangements on the same. It's like World of Warcraft launch music. They just tweak it uh, every time there's something new. And in the case of this online game, which is cool, they put out a new soundtrack for every expansion, uh, like Blizzard does with WoW, but. Uh, they they all kind of have a different take on that exact same theme. Somerset was way more frilly, high elf kind of tone. Um, Morrowind is a little more guttural. Uh, this dra- this new dragon one's pretty cool. It reminds me of like Diablo's dirt or uh, sand. What's the sand city you go to? What's it called? Um, Chaldeum. Chaldeum. It's like that kind yeah. of vibe to it. Um, it's just it's really good. Anyway, I'll quit screaming about that i'm just very happy no that no I, that's I, that's glad to hear the skyrim trailer is one of my top trailers of all times i think i've watched it like a that literally a thousand times it's really good i will watch it now and still get chills uh john but there was one day fear <laughs> they called him dragonborn i was <laughs> that was, good. That was that pretty good like really good impression of that voice yeah so yeah so has that, that they have that guy show up once in a while the actor who does that voice he shows oh, up sometimes. that's great yeah. I, i'm into it now yeah oh there's a there's a few of those dudes kind of the arrow into the knee guy we'll talk once in a while but it's tons of voices tons of characters i don't know i just feel like if you're an elder scrolls fan that's a hell of a place to hang out right now i like it okay um well, john you sold you sold me on it i bought the game john and matt i want I wonder, though, out in the fields where where men and 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 women are fighting hard against the uh, the old ways, playing old MMOs, and and wondering if ESO should even be a part of their life. I wonder what they would say in a letter written home to their dear wives as they as they wait for their husband to get home. Let's find out now, shall we? <laughs> My dearest Martha, I'm writing you today because I'm experiencing a new way to enjoy life you see i've found a treasure chest out in the wilds martha and i'm very excited i think this will do our family well maybe we can get little tommy's leg fixed up for him (laughs) maybe bethany can go to a fine school regardless martha i figured i would write this letter in real time as i open it as is wont to do in the era from which i am from oh well It seems, Martha, that I'm not able to open this chest just yet. Uh, (laughs) There seems to be an issue here, and, uh, well, I'm going to need to wait three to four weeks. (laughs) Well, I'm sure, I'm sure little Tommy, or whatever his name was a minute ago, can hold on a bit longer (laughs) while I wait for this chest (laughs) to unlock. (laughs) They tell me that I could also spend gems or something on it to make it sooner, but I honestly don't know what those are. (laughs) Anyway, looks like I've got a bit of free time here, Martha, so what's new with you? (laughs) Yours in this life and the next. Uh, Hillbilly 2. (laughs) Wait, why Hillbilly 2? What's that about? I I don't know. Hillbilly (laughs) 2. All right, now everybody complaining. We, we need to start done. writing down these Heroes of the Storm names we come across. Yeah. Also, yeah. when you said uh, <laughs> you couldn't remember Billy's name or Timmy's name or whatever, that was my favorite part of today's. That was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, Timmy, whatever his name is, I said a few minutes ago, my <laughs> yeah. son. Um, I'm very worried about him. <laughs> we are. Uh, we're going to get out of here with a quick email, and then we're done. I know this has been a very long episode, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed our our long form. Uh, yeah, blame me. Yeah, blame EA. Blame uh, all that. And Still blame stores. Video game stores on PCs. Blame those. Anyway, check this out. Tau of Craft wrote in and said, uh, subject was Stadia. It says, Stadia is not a made-up word. It is a correct plural form of stadium. So if you think about Google Cloud as multiple gaming arenas, then the name makes sense. LTL, FTC, love the dialogue and the new format, although a little more HOTS and Apex stuff would be cool. 
but I also get that uh, that from other shows, I guess. Peace out. Ah, uh, we well, you know when we're playing stuff, we'll let you know. We are playing Heroes of the Storm still. I that game's yeah, I just great right now. Installed their origin, so I don't know about the Apex stuff. Yeah, but... <laughs> I uh, I played Heroes of the Storm last night with yeah. Bo, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I got in. Got I had a we, we oh and Kyle. Oh yeah. yeah, do you guys play with Kyle? I wonder what your GGs were for. I missed all that. Uh, yeah, we played we played three games. Had a wacky night last night. Um, yeah. we hope to play one or two tonight, but we have a meeting before that. So I don't know. It's nine thirty here already. So who knows? Bo's already. It's like way past your bedtime. It's eleven twenty four p.m. Yeah, here. it's getting kind of late. So uh, we, uh, I don't know if we'll stream those or not. But yeah, Heroes rocks and Apex rocks and games are great and everyone should play video. Good. What does LTL mean? I don't know. LTL. Love the love. Love the uh, love. Lift the. Lawyers. I want to say it's learn to something. Lick, learn to lick. library. FTC is probably for the core. Oh, I know what it is. Little tiny liver. Okay. Yep. And then FTC is F the <laughs> – hold on. We better not go there. Let's see. Let's try uh, – Lost Tiny Leprechauns. There you go. Lost Tiny Leprechauns. Fart the cause. Find the champion. Find the champion. Find the char charlatan. According to Google, LTL stands for less than load. Less than truckload shipping or less than load is a transportation of relatively small weight. Really? I don't okay. think that's what they meant. What's, FC, yeah. what's FTC then? Uh, it's the net neutrality place for states. No, that's the, FCC. The Federal Trade Commission, sorry. Oh, no, you're right. FTC. Find the condom. Uh, Hold on. FTC acronyms, abbreviation, FTC slang. Hold on. We're going to find this because it's going to piss me off. Oh, first time caller, long time listener. But oh, first time that caller. Oh, oh. You win, John. With, look at the big brain. No, that's Brad. that's from the chat. That's from Jamie VX. It should have been flipped. FTC. Long time then, listener, first time caller. Yeah. Or no, no it's fine. Either way, it works. Yeah, it works. Yeah, long time listener. It works. Oh, whatever. Sorry. It's a palindrome. No, it is. Yeah, no. It's great. Wait, palindrome? <laughs> No. Radar is the palindrome, I think. R radar. Yeah, he can tell when the helicopters are coming early, and then they he tells all the doctors that... I like choppers. that it stands for for the core. Yeah, for like the core. That. There you go. Nailed it. Yeah, learn to look for the core. Learn to look, everybody. We had to look up Stadia. We realized it's a plural. Yeah. It's still a dumb name. I, that, that, I think it's even worse. I think I liked it better when it, I thought it was nonsense. Yeah, I think same. I'm like, I'm going to think the pearl of stadiums. Yeah, that's kind of my thinking as well. I mean, you can't fault people for not knowing that. How often do stadiums gather in a big huddle or a stadia, if you will? Yeah, stadia. Yeah, it's usually one stadium, the and then they're all other way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just came back from the 20 stadia downtown. I'm still going to say it's a dumb name. I'm just going to say it. Yeah. It's just the way it is. Uh, that's going to do it for the show, everybody. Thank you all so much for your time hanging out with us tonight. We appreciate it. Don't forget, you can support this madness over at patreon.com slash core show. We'd love it if you would. For those who have, we really appreciate you. And if you haven't, consider it patreon.com slash core show. You can find the website at frogpants.com slash core. And follow us all on Twitter. Uh, Bo's over there at Bo Schwartz. I'm at Scott Johnson. And John, of course, at John underscore Jagger. Just like the singer. You got to move like him. Uh, that's going to do it for us. Thank you all for listening. We'll see you next time. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. That's a good question. Yeah, I think that's our longest episode. Yeah.